So in last class, we did noun and noun parallelism. I think if you people, you people have read about it, today is one of the very important topic right now, what we are doing. It's adjective and adjective parallelism. It's adjective and adjective parallelism. So rules is pretty simple. That if you have and or but, And if you have used adjective on the left hand side, you should be using adjective on the right hand side as well. Now it looks to be very simple, but it may, it, it may get very complicated if you do not understand which word is an adjective, noun, verb, and all these things. So before we get into the before we get into it, please understand that there are three types of adjective. There are three types of adjective. Hi, Haran, can you hear me? Yeah. Perfect. So there are three types of adjective that we have. One is called standard adjective. Other is called present participle adjective. And the third one is called past participle adjective. Please, you are not supposed to get into the namings at all. If you, understand, if you understand that this particular word is an adjective, that's more than sufficient. So present participle adjectives, all ing form of adjectives are called present participle, all. And all third form of the adjectives are called like ed, en, t. These are all called past participle adjective. So please, you are absolutely not supposed to get into the namings at all. If you understand this is an adjective, that is more than sufficient. What we need to understand here is that please, I'm just telling you, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the application of this. So present participle adjectives are non-intentional. It means something that's not under your control. It happens by itself. Not under your control. It happens by itself. And past participle adjectives are intentional. Something that's under your control. What exactly is this? I'll explain you in details, but just understand that there are three types of adjective, the standard adjective, present participle adjective, past participle adjective, and adjectives are parallel to adjectives, simple logic. You are not supposed to look into that this is ing form of adjective and this is ed form of adjective. If both are adjective, they'll be absolutely 100% parallel. You are not supposed to get into the namings. Again, I'm telling you, if you understand that this particular word is an adjective, that is more than sufficient. Let's not get into the definitions at all, not required. So this question says now, question number 14, we are doing that before reading next four solution, read the theory given below. But before we get, get into the theory, let's understand what exactly is the question. So come down to question number 14 over here. It says the match was interesting the match was interesting, but fixed, but looks for parallelism. Tell me what exactly is interesting when I ask you what is interesting and what is fixed, you have to tell in form of noun, verb, adjective. What exactly you feel? When I say the match was interesting, what is interesting here? The match, it's an adjective. It's a match. So it is trying to describe the match. What is fixed over here? Match. So this is trying to describe match. So interesting and fixed both are adjective. And but looks for parallelism. So the sentence is absolutely 100% right. Why it is right? Because before but there is an adjective, after but there is an adjective. You are not supposed to look into the word that before but it is interesting ing form and that's what after but it should be fixing ing form. No. Now, what I've told you, now this these two are adjective. I hope it's very clear. Anyone, any doubt? Please tell me. Here. Rahul, just one yeah. doubt. Yeah. Um, is it enough for the word before and after but and or or to be adjective or should they be describing the same noun as well? No, same noun. All I've always told you parallelism always goes back to one subject. Same noun. Always. Okay. Always. Okay. I okay. cannot say, I cannot say here that Apuva is a beautiful girl and Gauri is a smart girl. This is crap sentence. Okay. You cannot write a sentence like Apurva is a beautiful girl. 
and gore is a smart key two now obviously you can say rahul this is and and looks for parallelism there is a verb on this side also left hand side also there is a verb on right hand side also no this hmm. is a crappy statement because we are we are trying to create parallelism between two different subject which makes no sense at all parallelism yeah. always goes back to one subject i'll clear it this I, i'll come down to the question after this question and then i'll clear this entire concept of parallelism always remember parallelism always goes back to one subject so you can say rahul is a good guy and rahul is a smart guy and he is a smart guy this is absolutely fine but you can't say rahul is a good guy and rohit is a smart guy this is crap so parallelism always goes back to same subject yeah. and today we'll be doing a lots of questions so don't worry it will be all clear sure rahul can there be any example in which uh, two independent clauses can be separated by a comma two independent clauses can 100% be separated ulas but those are the clauses which should refer to a same subject like you can 100% write a I, I can you can 100% write, write a clause that uh, rahul is a good guy yeah. and ulas is his friends is his friend so this is yes. this makes sense because you are trying to connect your clause with the previous clause in some way but you can't say rahul is a good guy and ulas is a smart guy why you need to put and over there put a full stop don't you okay. feel yeah yeah right so see here it says the match was interesting but fixed now interesting what i have told you ing form of adjective don't get into definitions don't get into the naming you don't have to understand it's a present participle adjective if you remember it's all fine but if you understand this is a adjective that's more than sufficient so what i have told you present participle adjectives are non intentional matlab something that's not under your control imagine you are someone who loves football now football game seems very interesting to you but i don't like football i don't like watching it i have no idea whatsoever is football so something that interests you does not at all justify that it, it should interest to other person as well so this is not under our control i can't ask you a question why you do why you like football now you can't ask me a question rahul why you like cricket that's a very interesting to me that's 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 absolutely something which is very unconscious i don't have a i don't have i have no consciousness over here that after all why is in cricket interesting to me no you love eating something you eat something so there is no question asked over here that why something interest you something that may interest you may not interest other at all so this is not under our control but fixed fixed is what now it's up to you go and play pay a player 10 crore rupees and fix the match are under humans control not under us and all something like that but it's under humans control for sure so i'm just trying to say you ki ing form of adjectives are something which is not under our control ed form of adjectives are something which is under our control now come down to this sizzler was spicy this is a standard adjective appetizing this is a present participle adjective but looks for parallelism overcooked this is past participle adjective simple logic absolutely now spicy is a standard adjective absolutely fine appetizing present participle adjective something that tastes you better sizzler may taste you better but i can say that i hate sizzler i don't like sizzler something that tastes you better may not at all justify that it should taste better to everyone so something which is not under our control at all overcooked 100% under your control today you have overcooked it tomorrow you don't overcook it but today you like something and tomorrow you will not like something that's crap today something tastes you better and tomorrow the same thing it won't happen that tomorrow the same thing will not taste you better so this is not under our control again taste something that tastes you good does not justify that it will taste everyone good this is not under our control overcooked is something which is under our control for sure so all these three are adjectives and this sentence is absolutely parallel because but denotes parallelism we are not supposed to think that here, here it is ing form and here it is a ed form that would be a crap thing that we are not supposed to think all we are supposed to ensure that there should be an adjective if and or but is there and we have written adjective on the left hand side there should be adjective on the right hand side that's it look into the third statement because of a strange budget a strained budget and fading public support indian hockey is dying a slow death if in fact if this is a sentence that is written to you in a rc passes or let's say cr argument so this is absolutely crap because of a strain budgets and fading public support indian hockey is dying a slow death this is a modifier my main core part of the sentence is core part of the sentence still remains indian hockey is dying a slow death 
if at all such sentences are written in the rc passes or cr passes please ensure that question will never be asked in rc passes or cr passes from the non essential part it will always be from the core part of the sentence the core part of the sentence is in in hockey is dying a slow death which has been very much reversed right now now things are going pretty well in hockey so but because it is a sentence correction so whatever sentence you write whether you write a essential part or you write a non essential part everything should be written in a proper format that is something which is extremely important now check over here <clears throat> it says because of strained budgets and fading public support so strained is what adjective for budgets or not is a and which looks for parallelism fading public support fading is an adjective for public support we can 100% remove strain and remove fading and write a sentence because of budgets and public support in office dying a slow death so please try and understand what is the role of adjective in the sentence the point is ki even if we remove adjective the sentence absolutely stands 100% fine the beauty about you writing a sentence is to use adjective very sure 100% this is how you should be using it understand that adjectives are something which makes sentence meaning wise much beautiful very it decorates the sentence it embellishes the sentence very beautifully i can tell you so you need to ensure that understand how should you be using adjective because when tomorrow when you are writing your essays and all for college you will you can't simply write a direct speech you can't simply write that he will come tomorrow he will not come matlab you have to embellish your sentences and that will only happen when you learn the art of using adjective in your sentences you can easily say because of the budgets and public support in an office dying a slow but there is a lot of questions when you say because of budgets and public support what do you mean by because of budgets and public support now when you write a small one single word that because of strained budgets it means ki budget is strained very not very fulfilling fading public support it means public support is fading now am as in strain when i use strain i'm i'm explaining in terms of intention non intention now it's under your control that you allocate a budget of 1 cr and make it very strained it's up to you you allocate a budget of 50 cr and make it very fulfilling fading public support imagine today you are a big celebrity huge big you are a big celebrity you have a huge public support tomorrow if you are caught in some scam your public support will go or not it will not be under your control at all absolutely not under your control tomorrow if you are caught in some scam and you and you feel that i should public should still support me it won't happen so this is something which is not under your control so because of strained budgets and fading public support indian hockey is dying a slow death so ing form of adjectives please understand 100% under your control is not under your control ed form of adjectives third form of adjectives are under your control but when this will be used i'll come down to this point at all i have just simply shown you with some example that this is not under your control this is under your control how when should you use this entire logic with respect to questions i'll come down to that now so i hope is this any any place any doubt here in this question number 14 in all the three sentences that we did right now now there is a huge theory that we need to do so come it says that before reading next four solution refer to the theory given below rahul now, there is one yeah, question that i have please tell yeah this this that this is con under control and this is not under control it looks hmm. very very subjective to me like the match was interesting the interest can be generated because of a pr activity and pr activity can be under control no it's not that uh, like amazon amazon i have like amazon i have never seen long tennis amazon like what federal plays whatever that wimbledon game and all now it may be like how would you convince me the point is that interest is something which can 100% be generated for sure i am not saying it cannot be generated but just tell me one thing ki something that interests you like let's say if you are someone who likes a uh, cricket a lot someone i am someone who i never was so it is actually not interesting to me for sure you can tell it's very subjective but this is how you can 100% get into the questions for sure for it but we will be able to mark answer with this like imagine now you can 100% you can 100% debate for tasty also or that rahul this is let's don't test you better but if you cook it in this way that way it might be that you start liking it so there is no yeah you can say it's a subjective for sure 100 percent okay. but in general this will work for sure i'll tell you uh, so, so rahul, like what i have okay. yeah continue continue please please so, tell me so what's the like what's the catch here is what i'm trying to understand uh, no i will will come down to that there is a different test also to understand where you use ing form where you use ed form okay we'll come to that point 
Okay. This is a very this is a very wholesome understanding that if it's under your control, you can if you understand this that it's under your control, you can hundred percent go with the ED adjective. It's not under your control, you can hundred percent go with the ING adjective. But there's a different taste. There's a different way to check. Also, I'll come to that then right now. Okay, thanks, Rahul. Any huh, who was asking this next? Uh, no, Rahul. I just wanted to confirm that uh, this yeah. is for sure that present uh, like uh, non intentional ING. Form of ING. And but that's what I'm I'm coming down to the point. When should you be using it? Okay. There's a way to use it. There's a lot of adjective where you can say that Rahul flirting is an adjective which is hundred percent under my control. If I want to flirt with someone, I flirt. If I don't want to flirt with someone, I won't flirt. But I'll come down to that point. When should you be using it? Please don't mind. Don't worry. I'm coming down to that point. <clears throat> now let's understand simple ing form used as an adjective. The barking dog kept us awake at night. So. 100% this is not a verb. Be very sure. The only one I've told you in the last class, ING form alone can never be a verb. How much ever tempting it looks to you, this is not a verb at all. And if this is not a verb, this can either be a noun or adjective because ING form can be three things. Adjective, noun, or verb. This is not a verb. <clears throat> now imagine if I remove this barking, the dog kept us awake at night. This is 100% or adjective. Agreed? Anyone, any doubt? The dog barking outside the gate kept us awake. It means again, this is not a verb for sure. Be hundred percent sure about ing form alone are not a verb. I think someone asked me in the last class, what exactly do you mean by this Rahul that ing form alone are never a verb? I simple means that if the uh, ing form alone is mentioned over here, this is not a verb. Now, if it is not a verb, it can either be a noun or adjective. The dog outside the gate kept us awake. This is absolutely perfectly fine. So barking is an adjective. Now barking and yelling, the dog chased him. So barking and yelling is a modifier which is trying to modify dog. Even if you remove the sentence and read the sentence, it makes an absolutely perfect sense. The dog chased the man furiously, barking as loudly as it could. Here the modifier is written after the comma, but what I have told you, you first always write modifier, then write the subject. Like barking as loudly as it could, comma, the dog chased the man furiously. But they are trying to say, you even this way of writing the sentence is not wrong. This is absolutely okay. And what I have told you that 90% of the time, ING form after comma goes back to the entire clause. But can you tell me the entire clause is barking over here? No, it is only dog which is barking. There is no point about it that the entire clause would be barking. Agreed? Now they are trying to define you present participle adjective. Please don't get into the definition. Absolutely don't get into the definition. It says the present participle describes the person or a thing that causes it. It describes the subject. Simple logic. But please, time and again, I'm telling you, do not get into the definitions at all. Now, just understand if this is an adjective. It says here, she jealously was her boyfriend flirting with other girl. Now, 100%, you will be tempted to understand that this is a verb. But trust me, ing form alone, not me, trust the grammar. ing form alone are never a verb. So this is not a verb at all. It means ki, what is a verb? She jealously was her boyfriend. This is a verb. Because a sentence can't be a sentence without a subject and a verb. See, jealously was her boyfriend. This is the core part of the sentence. Flirting with other girl is all crap. This is just trying to describe boyfriend. Now you can 100% argue with me, Ki Rahul, this is non intentional This is something which is under boyfriend's control. But please don't use it over here. I'll come down to the point. Don't worry at all. It will be very clear. The party was boring. 100% adjective referring to the party. The car race was exciting. 100% adjective referring to the car race. Imagine. Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, one quick question. The party was boring. Here, bore, was is the past version of is, and does that, doesn't that make it a verb? Like, how do you distinguish that? No, boring, like, boring is not a verb. It is something that is describing the party. Yeah, but then there is a was, which is the past the part, of Because is. the point is, ki you can't you can't have a sentence without a subject and a verb, no, Upanishad. The party was. Okay. That's it. Okay. Okay. You can't have a sentence without a subject and a verb. So boring is not a verb over here. Boring is something which is trying to describe this was the party. The car race was exciting. Exciting is not a verb. Okay, is plus ing, was plus ing is verb, but they are not always the verb. The second line of that says that, right? Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Understood. The passenger wanting to go to Liverpool had to change in Manchester. So actual sentence is passenger had to change in Manchester. Check. Wanting to go to the Liverpool is crap. Be very sure ING form alone can never be a verb. Do not at all think this is a verb. But the point is you should try and understand what is a verb then. So wanting to go to Liverpool is crap. Passenger had to change in Manchester. Had is a verb over here. Had to change. To change is also a verb. 
Irish people living in Great Britain have the right to vote. Irish people have the right to vote. Living in Great Britain is nonsense. It's an adjective describing Irish people. House is standing at the end of road will soon be sold. House will soon be sold. This is the actual sentence. The boy carrying a blue parcel crossed the street. The boy crossed the street carrying a blue parcel is crap. So please understand, subject, besides subject, if you get ING form and AD form, 90% of time they are adjective. I'll prove this, don't worry. So, sorry, sorry, Raul, could you please repeat the, just what you said? I, yeah, I've just tried to say besides subject, imagine passengers wanting to go to Liverpool. If besides subjects, the ING form and AD form comes, 90% of the time they are adjective. And I'll prove this. I'll 100% prove okay. this. It's just, I'm just telling you, until we don't do the question, the understanding will not come. The ED form, ING form, Harin, it will be very clear to you right now. Now they are trying to say your third form of the verb used as an adjective. They have given you a definition when you describe person's reactions or the feeling. Don't get into definitions at all. You understand this word is an adjective that is more than sufficient. When I say Jennifer's born hand, what is born? Adjective referring to hand. Agreed? The broken chair. What is broken? Adjective referring to chair. Her recipe called for 12 bit and X. What is bitten? Adjective referring to X. Nancy found a hidden staircase. What is hidden? Adjective referring to staircase. Please ensure. Laura fascinated by a movie star. Wrote him a letter every day. Fascinated by a movie star is a crap. Laura wrote him a letter every day. So it's an adjective which is referring to Laura. So these are all ED form. ED form broken, bitten, hidden. But come down to the sentences now. Mm. Every Each Saturday we have a pizza delivered to our home. 100% you will think that this is a verb. But please understand this is not a verb. If this is not a verb, what is a verb? We have a pizza. Actual core part of the sentence is we have a pizza. That's it. Now, if you, why you are using this delivered to our home? To make sentence much more clear. We have a pizza. Like we had a pizza. Now imagine where you had a pizza. You had in Domino's. You had in Pizza Hut. You had in Home. The beauty, the beauty around adjective is that it makes sentence very clear. It doesn't leave any niche for you to ask a question again. We had a pizza delivered to our home. This is being very clear that you, your pizza was being delivered. You had the pizza. The actual sentence is we had pizza. We had our last party. That's it. <clears throat> organized by professional is nothing but referring to party. Do not at all confuse that organized is a verb. Please understand. We had. Had is a verb over here. I have a cat called Terry. This is something which is referring to cat. I'm very interested in history. Please don't read this. It will be a waste of time. You can 100% think on this sentence by yourself. For sure. Like, even I'm not convinced with the sentence. Now, see here. The cup filled with the milk stood on the table. Cup stood on the table. Filled with the milk is nothing. Adjective. The battle fought at this place was very significant. The battle was very significant. Fought at this place is crap. The book sent to us are of my aunt. The book are of my aunt. Sent to us is crap. <clears throat> is an adjective. The picture stolen from the museum was offered on eBay. Stolen from the museum is crap. Picture was offered on eBay. The song sung last night is still in my head. The song is still in my head. Rahul, I have a confusion here. Where? Please tell me. In all these three last three sentences, isn't uh, the battle fought at this place was very significant. The part fought at this place, isn't that also a major thing that I'm yeah, sure it's absolutely. adding to it, but isn't it it's like... Just adding, it's just adding. It's just adding. The battle was very significant. Fought at this place or this in place of, you can't write this, the battle fought at Delhi was very significant. But isn't that an essential detail to the sentence? Because it specifically fought at that place was a significant. The rest of the battles may not be as significant, right? Significantly significant it may be. It's not that I'm not trying to say it's not significant. It can be a very essential part to it. But the point is that this is just trying to describe the battle. The, okay, got the it. information in this sentence is nothing but a description of the battle. The actual sentence is battle was very significant. No doubt at all. But look, this can be a, this can be a very significant considering that you are trying to say ki battle fought at Delhi and all. We are trying to describe ki because if we simply say the battle was very significant, the sentence is hundred percent fine. But what battle? Which battle we are talking about? There is like one lakh battle which has happened around the globe. So you are just trying to do nothing in adjective. What exactly you do? You make it very clear, meaning wise, the battle fought at Delhi in 1929 was very significant or in 1947 was very significant. So battle fought at Delhi in 1947, this is all crap. The actual sentence is the battle was very significant. Right? Clear. The books sent to us are of my aunt. The books are of my aunt. Sent to us is crap. 
picture stolen from the museum was offered in eBay. Now imagine, based on your logic, stolen from the museum, this is also a very significant thing. It might be a picture of some great thing. Like there are a lot of pictures that used to be stolen before. But the actual sentence is the core part of the sentence. The picture, picture was offered on eBay. The song sung last night is still, the song is still in my head. The documentation telecast last Tuesday was impressive. The documentation was impressive. The conference planned by non-government organization was about globalization. The conference was about globalization. So please check over here also, guys. Besides subject, you get ED form. Filled, fought, sent, stolen, sung, planned, any third form. So ING form and ED form or any to, to be very subjective, right? Third form is 90% of the time they are adjective. 90% of the time. Now, these are all modifier accused of the murder. He was arrested. Now, he was accused of the murder. This is all crap. This is a modifier which is trying to modify he that accused of the murder. Rahul was arrested. When you say Rahul was arrested, there is a lot of question ki what exactly he has done. But when you say accused of the murder, then it means that sentence gives you a very clear meaning. So, the definition of adjective is simply to make sentence meaning wise much more clear so that there is no nothing left where you can ask a question. Excited about their birthday party. The girls could not sleep. This is nothing but a modifier modifying girls. Now the question comes, how do you select right adjective? Now this is a place where your intention and non-intention comes into picture. So first thing is what I've told you. So please understand when in a question you have a, when in any questions when you are trying to solve and you have a ING form of adjective given to you there, ED form of adjective, both are given to you in the option. Now, your job is to understand where you select ING form. How do you select a AD form? Now, this is a place where your intention and non-intention comes into picture. You cannot at all say here, Ki Rahul, flirting is under boyfriend's control. So why should we use flirting? No, in a normal sentence, when you, when you are using adjective, please use 100%. Because you can't say flirted with other girl. Now, that makes, that makes no sense at all. The point is that intention, non-intention should only come into picture with respect to question. So there's a question given to you. Now there's adjective form, ing form is also given to you, ed form is also given to you. Now it has this for you, like which adjective should you select? So that's a place where under your control, not under your control comes into picture. Now this is one test. The other test is was and world test. I'll explain to you what is was and world test. Now imagine the volcano erupting or erupted was a sight to watch. Eruption of volcano is under our control or not under our control? Not under our control. Because there has been a lot of time where scientists have told that this volcano will erupt in next one year and that volcano has not even erupted till next 50 years. And there is a lot of instant where scientists have told this volcano will take 100 years to erupt and it has erupted just in seconds. If you go and read it, there are humongous such incidents which are present. So eruptions, when volcano will erupt, there has been no science which has come out and said that there's a, this is the exact time of a volcano to erupt or this is a more or less time that in a week volcano will erupt. It, it, it doesn't work in that way. So eruption of volcano is not under our control. It should be erupting. Now, this is what I'm telling. I'm telling her in all this technique that it is under your control, not under your control with respect to question, not with respect to a normal writing of adjective at all. Now, imagine this is one way. Now, what is other way? The other way says he use was and world test. What, what exactly is this was and world test? It says that between subject, that is volcano, and between the adjective, Depending on the subject, it's was or were. And between the adjective, put this was and were and see what is making sense. The volcano was erupting. Does it make sense? Or it says the volcano was erupted. What makes sense for you? Just think about it. Volcano was erupting. It absolutely makes sense. What do you mean by volcano was erupted? Volcano erupted. That's it. That's one event. Was erupted makes no sense at all. Volcano was erupting. Erupting ING form denotes a moment of time. We'll come down to all this stuff. Don't worry at all. So this makes sense. So volcano was erupting is the right one to choose. There is one thing cell phone design or designing for elderly had a larger case. Trust me, design of cell phone is under human's control or not? Under human's control for sure, right? So design is the right thing. The cell phone designed for elderly had a larger keys or else you can use was and world test. What is was and world test? That between the subject and the adjective, put was and word and see what makes sense to you. So imagine the cell phone was designed. Does it make sense? Or you feel the cell phone was designing? 
what makes sense for you. Haran, is this clear? Yeah. Cell phone was designed, make 100% sense. Cell phone was designing is nonsensical for sure. So designed is the right thing. Differing or deferred only by two minutes, the time in two o'clock created confusion in mind of football player. Now let's first use was and word test and then I'll come down to ing and then I'll come to intention and non-intention. So what is my what is my subject over here? The times. What is adjective? Differing on deferred. Now let me see the times were differing. This makes sense, or you feel the times were deferred, which makes sense to you. Tell me. Think. The times deferred. What do you mean by times were deferred? Times were differing. This is absolutely perfectly making a whole lot of sense. And again, understand the times in two o'clock created confusion in mind of football player. Now, in football, it's a game of one and a half hour. Every second is very important. Imagine this is a goal post and there is a clock over here which shows it is 10 10. Imagine this is a goal post and there's a clock over here which shows 10 05. If players see these two differences between the time in two goal posts, don't you feel they'll kill each other? They'll literally go mad. They'll go mad. They'll be confused like a... They'll go mad out of confusion for sure. Okay, what the hell is happening? Where every second is important. You can't defer time by five minutes or two minutes or three minutes at all. And technically you are doing nothing. A guy comes, it, he keeps a type 10 over here. He keeps come and he keeps a time of 10 and 5 over. There is no interaction between player and the guy who is differing the time and clock. But player are going mad. So this is not under our control. You are just differing time and player inside the ground is going mad. So I was sitting a die-hard football fan. So it's like, Rahul, what you're saying is crap. There is no clock on the left-hand side. There's no clock on the right-hand side. Clock is in the middle and there's just one clock. I'm like, okay. I'm not a football fan. Is this clear or not? So it should Rahul, be I have a doubt. Yeah, please tell me. Which is more correct between uh, the times uh, deferred and uh, the other sentences, the times were differing. If we the have times were one... differing and the times were deferred. No, the times differed. One is this and other is the times were differing. Which is more correct if we have to choose one out of two. No, so you have to use was and void test over here. You have to use was and void test over here. As to was and void test is what? That you have to, between a subject and the adjective, put was Put, put was or were, depending on the subject is plural or singular, and see what makes sense to you. Like imagine the cell phone was designed. This makes sense, right? Yes. When you say the cell phone was designing, does it make sense? Okay. So here I put the times were differing. This makes a hundred percent sense, but do you feel the times were differed? It makes sense at all. No, no, I am no. asking between between the two statements. One is the times were differing, other is the times differed, which is so more correct. No, it's not about more correct. It's not about what in what perspective you are trying to use. You can use in fact both the statements. Why not? So when you say times were differing, it means that whenever you use ing form or last, it denotes a moment of time. When you say it was, when you say it is raining, what's the meaning of this? Or can you say it's it is raining for two hours? Can you make can you say a sentence like this? Imagine. It is raining for two hours. Or you say a sentence, it is raining. Tell me which is right. This is a hardcore grammar thing, which I want to avoid it. But still, tell me, you have asked, so let's say. If, which is right statement? Tell me. Ush. Both are correct, I think. No, this is 100% wrong. ING form always denotes a moment of time or less. Always. A moment cannot be in two hours. Moment is right at that moment. When I say ki, when I entered in Ula's room, he was sleeping. It simple means ki you were sleeping right at that moment. When I say it is raining, it means it is raining right at this moment. You don't know whether it was raining two minutes earlier or it will, it will it be raining two minutes after. But at this moment it is raining, so you say it is raining. ING form always denotes a moment of time, Ula's. Always. You can never say a sentence it is raining for two hours. Because a moment cannot be spread into us. Moment is right at that moment. So if you have that, to say it has been raining for two hours, this is right. It has been raining for two hours that it has started before two hours. It is raining till now. But ING form alone always don't some moment of time with us. Always. So both are right. It depends on what perspective you use. It. Okay. In this perspective, it will be different. Agreed? 
Yeah, yeah. After question number twenty, we have today. In fact, we'll be doing last. It will be a tenses will be covered. It will be very clear to you. But the normal grammatical rules would be very clear to you. I want to be far from all these rules, which is hardcore grammar. We don't require that at all. We just you understand what is adjective, verb, noun. I promise you, ninety percent of the question is done. I literally promise you, and I'll show it to you. Uh, so, Raul, I'm... just one thing, one thing, one thing. Sorry. No, yeah. Sure. Could you could you please scroll up? Yeah. Yeah, just this last sentence. Uh, the time. The ma- no, 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 the mangled pair of sunglasses. Uh, huh. Bruised mangled face. Mangled pair of sunglasses, bruised face. So mangled is an adjective for pair. Bruised is an adjective for face. Broken arm is broken is an adjective for arm. Bleeding knees. It's an adjective for hand. There's an and over here which looks for parallelism. So if at all you have done knees, you have used an adjective for word knees. You will have to use adjective for everything. Okay, but if you bring like the intention and the non-intention don't, don't part, don't bring, don't, intention and non-intention part you only bring with respect to question array. So when we solve a question, imagine we are solving a question, or let's say should we solve a question? I'll I'll come down okay. to that. Part. I'll hundred okay. percent come down okay. to that part. Don't okay. worry, don't worry. Intention, non-intention, you only bring with respect to a question that you are given ed form also, you are given ing form also. Now how which which adjective should you choose? Always. Okay. Rahul, I had a question. Yeah. Uh, just in the same sentence that we were talking about, right? The mangled sunglasses one. Hmm. Um, yeah, correct. So in this uh, bruised face, now bruise is an adjective for face, broken is an adjective for arm, bleeding is an adjective for knees, right? But all of these adjectives are pointing to different nouns, right? No, it's there. they might be pointing to different nouns, but see ki what exactly the entire sentence, the mangled pair of sunglasses. So actually, this is nothing. The sunglasses, face, arm, knees, men, gen- me- knees meant genity had taken another spell. So all these sunglasses, face, arm, knees meant genity had taken. It is going back to genity one. You know, these are all which these are all the these are all the nouns which belongs to genity one, right? Okay. Agreed. Yeah, yeah. So this is an adjective which is referring to this noun. This is an adjective which is referring to this noun. But technically, everything is going back to genetic one. Nothing else at all. Got it. Always Got a purva. Always. But this is the this is a proper rule of purva that parallelism always goes back to one subject. It might not look very direct to you, but if you understand, okay. it will hundred percent go back to one subject. Got it. Okay. Now these are some small small sentences which says you which you should exactly know also you should remember you should understand also these are the two two statements that you should remember so that you will never be you will never have a problem in choosing what is adjective and a verb when I say he stressed the wire what do you feel stressed is because if I remove stress from here the question the sentence becomes he the wire makes no sense at all so this is a verb agreed. But when you say elastic is stressed because of the repeated uses, actual sentence elastic became too used to be used in child span. This is the actual sentence. The elastic is stressed because of the repeated uses became too loose to be used in child span. So please understand here the stressed is a verb. And this is stressed is an adjective. Anyone has any problem, please ask me. These are the normal distinction which you should 100% know. He stressed the wire, stressed is a verb. Because if I remove stress from here, he, the wire, makes no sense at all. But when you remove stressed, because of this is this is absolutely making a perfect sense. The elastic became too loose to be used in child pants. So here the stressed is an adjective. And here the stressed is a verb. Imagine the man found the coin. What is found? Verb. Because if you remove found, the man, the coin, makes no sense at all. But when you say the coin found in the museum turned out to be of inferior quality. So found in the museum is crap. Coin turned out to be of inferior quality. So in statement number one, found is a verb. In statement number two, found is an adjective. See here. Agreed. So when I have said you ki besides subject, when you use ed and ing form, do a bit, be a bit cautious, but 100% I'll tell you 90% of the time they'll be adjective. I can 100% ensure you that. Because these are the words you have to remove found from above. This is gone. The man, the coin makes no sense at all. The man found the coin, found is a verb over here, but you remove found from here. The coin turned out to be of inferior quality. So in first statement, found is a verb. In second statement, found is an adjective. The book sold 3 million copies. Now the sold is a verb because if you remove sold from here, the book 3 million copies makes no sense at all. Just one word. 
the book sold was of inferior quality here you remove sold the book was of inferior quality so the sold is an adjective is an adjective now it says the simple rules of parallelism adjective is parallel to present participle adjective is parallel to past participle so the match was interesting but fixed both are adjective both are absolutely perfectly parallel the sizzler was spicy appetizing but a bit overcooked all these three are adjective We're going back to sizzlers perfectly absolutely parallel i'm just doing the sentence that we have done now see here like the because of strain budgets adjective for budgets fading public support adjective for public support indian hockey is dying a slow death in this case also purva you see everything is going back to indian hockey you can 100% say strain is an adjective for budgets fading is an adjective for public support right purva yeah but end of the day it is all going back to indian hockey only now it is referring all to indian hockey okay so this is like an indirect way of like it takes a little bit of understanding to figure that it's not a direct relation but at the end it's all pointing towards the same the subject point is it's a direct relation of purva you check you remove this because of budgets and public support in hockey it's a straight forward relation the point is that they are trying to say if you are if you want to use adjective for this particular noun and mm. you have written and over here you will have to use adjective for this particular noun as well but the reference of this entire previous clause is nothing but a modifier which is referring to in every but the entire previous clause is directly referring to in hockey okay it has got no meaning at all i can indian hockey is dying a slow death this is a whole clause which has been reversed now now indian hockey is actually doing very well but this entire clause is nothing but trying to refer to indian hockey so you can't say direct and indirect the meaning wise it is going back to all indian hockey there is no change in the subject at all agreed okay yeah now imagine <clears throat> this now simple this is a sentence the smoke coming out of now you see how complicated they can make the sentence the actual sentence is smoke was very thick but they are trying to say smoke coming out of the window frosted by the fog now coming out of the window is nothing but an adjective referring to smoke frosted by the fog is nothing but an adjective so the point is ki sentence can be very simple but they can complicate a whole lot by putting an adjective and you should be cautious about it that's it if you understand what is a, always remember a sentence your first job when you solve any sentence correction problem is to understand what is the essential part in the sentence we'll do one question right and to understand what is the non essential part of the sentence if you understand this be very sure that non essential part of the sentence 90% of time there will be no verb when i say 90% of the time you can imagine 99% for sure i can't say 99% tomorrow you will come and ask me ki raul what is this so 10% concession even i need for myself 90% of the time there will be no verb no verb in the non essential part if you have this understanding while reading the sentence if you don't then again it will be a problem for sure but let's we will we'll do it don't worry at all so see here 14th number says the match was interesting but fixed both are adjective the question is a case of blind parallelism with actual parallelism we must not look interesting in the ing form and ed does not look parallel we must look into the role of each word the word interesting is an adjective present participle the word fixed is an adjective past participle don't get into the namings not required at all The sizzler was spicy, appetizing, but a bit overcooked. Spicy is a standard adjective. Appetizing is a present participle adjective. Overcooked is a past participle adjective. Because of strained budgets, fading public support. This is all adjective. Now, question number fifteen is a verb and verb parallelism. We'll come down to this, but let's solve one question. Imagine, read question number sixteen, please. When you read, read this statement, please once. This is actually a question. I'll I'll solve this question, but before we solve. let me explain you so that you just tell me why other options are wrong you will know the answer please try read, read this question number 16 always remember when sentence is so big 100% it will have some non essential part for sure so what is uh, when i read this sentence then increased popularity and availability of television has led to the decline of regional dialect makes an absolutely perfect sense 100% i 
after comma it says language variations originating from diverse ethnic and cultural heritage and perpetuated by geographic location do you think that is there any verb in the second part of the sentence please tell me if anyone has any confusion that there is any verb be very sure ing form alone are not a verb if you say these things are a verb you you deserve a slap for sure is there any verb no so language variations originating from diverse ethnic group and cultural diverse ethnic and this is one subject so don't start asking this and is for parallelism and no. all this is just one subject one noun language variations originating from diverse something and this and looks for parallelism perpetuated by geographic location now harin your question will be very clear i'm actually giving the question over here i'll give you the question so it says what is the second part after comma what is the sentence trying to do anyone describing describing regional dialects right do you actually feel it is doing anything else except describing regional dialect the actual sentences the increased popularity and availability of television has led to the decline of regional dialect now they have put one comma and they have described regional dialect language variations originating from diverse ethnic group and perpetuated by geographic location tell me originating origin of language is under, under our control or not under our control i would say no so it's originating right adjective perpetuated is under our control or not under our control obviously if you go and perpetuate your language today you go to mexico the national language of mexico is spanish for your kind information you go to texas after it, it if you go to texas even in us it's a huge population that speak spanish and they don't speak english don't don't expect you to talk them to with you them in the in in the, in the english language they speak being in united states they speak spanish so you go and perpetuate your language but imagine where is spain and where is mexico think about it no there is a 1000 km difference 3000 km something so these people went settled there started perpetuating their own language until you don't go and spread your language how your language will spread simple so perpetuation is something which is 100% under, under, under our control originating is an adjective perpetuating is an perpetuated is an adjective there is an and over here the sentence is absolutely perfectly parallel but now let's come down to this sentence let's come down to the question and you tell me what is the right answer what is the wrong answer and have your own reasoning to it please take 2 minutes think about it one sec question number 16 right see how now this is a place herein where your entire this will be clear confusion of ing form ed form now don't absolutely don't tell me what is the right answer you have to take 2 minutes or take 3 minutes nothing to worry about and tell me why options are wrong ensure that have some reasoning let it be right or wrong that doesn't matter at all so this is a question in front of you choose the answer i'm not speaking for 2 3 minutes please carry on
So what's the answer? Answer. Oh, that is fine. These two answers. Tell me why is A wrong? Why is A wrong? Why is B wrong? Why is C wrong? Why is E wrong? Any answer, any, any, any reasoning. Nothing, nothing doesn't matter at all. But until you don't tell, it won't happen. Trust me. You have to say why it is wrong. Tell me why is A wrong? Lash, Manan, Shreya, Gauri, tell. Tell, so, uh, tell something. Can, Doesn't matter to yeah. anyone. So uh, the way I thought about this is like we, when we were having the discussion, uh, we we were discussing that a uh, language originating is not intentional, right? It's not in our control. But that's okay. That's okay. But that is something that you already know now. Now, considering that you Correct. don't know that logic. Okay. You know, you need to know that logic will come when when you mark an answer, right? You tell me this logic that Rahul have used this logic too. That is fine. But tell me why is no. A wrong? Why is B wrong? Why is C wrong? I think A is wrong because originate is in present form. Like uh, there is uh, no parallelism between the perpetuated and originate. But Which why? Origin? That's, that's brilliant. But tell me why? Tell me a proper reasoning to it. Because, Simple, because which originate is a verb. Originate as a word is a verb. And perpetuated is an adjective. There's an and over here, which looks for parallelism. The sentence is not parallel. Yeah. Okay. Right? Yep. And this originated is also a verb because you are using a relative pronoun. That, which goes back to regional dialects. The regional dialects originated from diverse ethnic group. So if I told you understand what is intention, what is non-intention, option A is, what is, what is, sorry, intention only, what is essential part, what is non-essential part, option number A is gone straight away because they're using verb, option number B is gone, this is using verb, so straight away gone. Now come down to C, D, and E, originated from diverse ethnic group and perpetuate. Now this is a place, Harendra, where you have to think, the originated is a right adjective or perpetuate is a right adjective. Now this is a place where things will come into your mind that it should be intention, non-intention should come. So that's what I was telling. Whenever you are, whenever you are trapped in option, that's a place that you will use originating over here or originated over here. That's the place. So that is wrong because of this reason. E is wrong because it is originating and it is perpetuating. Perpetuating is not the right adjective because it's under your control. It was perpetuated by someone. It cannot be done by itself. Technically, you can say that our language perpetuation is how under humans control. If you see subjective wise, it is not under a human's control because every each people keeps perpetuating their language. But at the end of the day, who is perpetuating? Someone is perpetuating. So D is the right answer. But again, before we get into the next question, let's solve question number 17 also. This is also a brilliant question, but I will not explain you the answer before. Now you do by, by yourself. One second. It is exactly the same thing, 16 and 17, but a bit different. Rahul, just in the question number 16, maybe yeah. say. Revealed yeah, out of yeah. mind, but still. Uh, tell me, tell me. Here in the essential part of the sentence, basically it is talking about the first one. television. Yeah, the first one. Before, like before the prepositional the phrase. Point. Yep. So uh, it's it's plural here, right? It's oh, it televisions. Is, oh, that's that's a brilliant question. A lot of people have asked. We have seen it very properly. The it says the pop, increased popularity and availability of television. Of television is. This is gone. This is the thing. The increased popularity and availability has led to the decline of regional dialects. We have read that two subjects joined by and is always plural, right? But there is some concept group. The increased popularity. They hear the actual sentence is what? The actual, the actual focus is what? The increased popularity and availability. The actual focus is on increase. But point is here, Arin, do not think at all because do not think about non-underlying part a lot, Arin. Not okay. our, not, not, but we should not challenge non underlying part at all. Absolutely no. Actual sentence, the increased popularity and availability, the, but in fact, that you see the increased popular, you can 100% get confused. Kid, all two subjects joined by and you have thought it should be R. So it should be have over here. But no, the focus here is, here is on increased popularity and availability of television has led to decline of regional dialect. And this is not underlined. So let's not think a lot about this. Arun. Absolutely no. Okay. 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 A lot of people ask me this question. If you see it properly, 100% you will go mad in this. Now, look, look into the second one now. Wait. This is, a, this is again a very brilliant question. 
exactly the same, but you will have a much beautiful understanding about how to mark the answer. So we have not discussed this. I'll discuss it with you here itself. Please take two minutes to do this question. Please do. And please tell, speak up. Every one of you speak up something. Until you don't speak, it will not be, it'll be hard to understand. You speak something wrong, that's all okay. But just listening will not help, I'm telling you. Tell what the answer. See, okay. Other answers, please. Because in sentence correction, guys, there is absolutely no way of you answering the question except. There's just one process. You have to uh, you have to ensure that four answers are wrong for a certain reason. Simple logic. There is no other way of doing sentence correction that you will choose the right answer. Never ever do that. It will be a huge problem. Yeah, it says. So, what is the essential part in this sentence? The growth of railroad led to the abolition of local times. This is all crap. And to the establishment of regional time. Abolition of Abolition is now straightforward. Establishment of establishment is now. Now we straight away told you that a word followed by a prepositional phrase is always a noun. So this sentence is testing your noun and noun parallelism, and this is absolutely perfectly fine. This is a non. This is an essential part of the sentence. The line which I have cut, which is actually underlined, is a non-essential part. But the point is, in sentence correction, you have to write everything right. You cannot say that this is wrong and all. In sentence correction, everything that you write should make some sense. So now you see here the growth which was determined. Absolutely fine. Imagine what is which going back to. I would say that middle part is straight away doing nothing but referring to local times and nothing else at all. Which was determined. What is which going? Imagine if you say which was. So which goes back to local times, right? So local times was determined. This is a verb. And differing. This is not a verb. So it is not parallel. So parallelism does, just doesn't help you in choosing the answer. Parallelism is one of the most beautiful concepts to eliminate the answer. You don't understand okay, this is a non-essential part. That is also fine. But you should understand this. It is not parallel. Because which was determined is 100% a verb. Differing alone is not a verb. ING form alone are not a verb. You don't have to even think about it, what it is. But it is not parallel. So gone. Which was determined. Again, this is a verb. And which deferred. Which deferred. Again, deferred is not a verb. But it might be for you it might be a verb, but imagine. So there's one more thing about which. I'll explain it to you in the class. So there's a, there's a, for that we have studied, there's a rule for which, that which is a pronoun, simple logic. And a pronoun should always refer back to a noun. It's a simple definition of any pronoun. 
But in case of which, please understand, this is all wrong that which refers to the immediately preceding subject. These are all wrong. Simple is, if which refers to a noun, there should be no verb in between. Be very sure about it. There should be no verb. And the reference of which is decided by the clause that follows which, I'll, I'll teach you it properly in letter part. The reference of which is decided by clause that follows which. So here, which is referring, here, which differ, what differed? Actually, it is a local time that differed. Imagine. But between which and this local time, there is a was determined, it is a verb. So reference of this which is wrong. It's straightforward. Again, which were determined? So this is again a verb. And differing. This is not a verb. This is not parallel. So this is gone. Moreover, please understand which was determined. This is 100% wrong because which goes back to local time. Local time is plural. So was, was is anywhere wrong. But that's on the right logic to mark it wrong. The logic is that you should understand this is not parallel. Now between D and E, determined by when sun is the observer's meridian and deferred. Determined by when sun is the observer's meridian and deferring. So what, it, what is exactly determined and deferring going back to? This is 100% going back to local time. This is They are trying to describe local time. The actual sentence is the growth of railroad led to the abolition of local time and to the establishment of regional time. Noun and noun parallelism question, absolutely fine. But here the non-essential part is underlined. So when you say determined by when sun is the observer's meridian and deferred, deferred from city to city and differing from city to city. Now imagine, if you try and determine anything by yourself, it is 100% under your control. I've never, I've never seen determining as a word used as an adjective. Determining as a word can be 100% used as a noun, for sure. But I have never seen determining as a word used as an adjective. It will always be determined because you try and determine something, it's under your control, simple logic. So determined by when sun is the observer's meridian and deferred. From city to city and differing from now, imagine what is the local time in India right now? 11:35. What is the local time in America right now? It will be 11:35 p.m. So local time in UK would be what five hours difference. Local time in Australia would be what six hours later. So the difference of local time is not under our control. This is differing from city to city. This is not under our control. What it is local time that is differing. So you can't say deferred at all. It should be differing. Is the right answer? Anyone? Uh, Harind, is this clear? Uh, actually, Rahul, I think I kind of lost you in the middle of some network issue. Could you please, why why did you abolish this B and C? Why did you like reject them? B and C is to a straight away parallelism issue, which was determined and which deferred this, which reference we don't know. I've just told you that if which refers back, which is a pronoun, Harin, right? Right. It refers back to a noun. Agreed? Any pronoun refers back to a noun, right? Yeah. The rule with which says that if which as a pronoun is referring back to a noun, there should be no verb in between. Okay. Yeah. So which, because this which is going back to what? It is local time that was determined. It is local time that is differing, right? So which differed, yeah. so which should also go back to local time. But when which is going back to local time was determined is a verb over here. So reference of this which is a problem. Okay. Which was determined? This is a verb over here. And differing. This is not a verb. So this is not parallel. And looks for hardcore parallelism. Agreed? Mm -hmm. And D and E is, is, is this understood? Why not deferred and why different? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is this clear, Haran? When yeah. you have to use ing form and when ed form? Yeah. Because this, you don't, in normal, when you are using your adjective, don't at all think about intention, non intention. But in question, when you get a, that you can use originating or you can use originated or differing or deferred. So at, this is a place where we should 100% understand that this logic should come into picture. Is this clear? Now, do so. This is question number 16. Question number 17 is done. Question number 17 is also done. The growth of railroad led to the abolition of local time. This is all crap. And to the establishment of regional time. Can you please solve question number one for me? This question. I'll come down to question number 15, please. But let me finish all the questions of adjective and adjective parallel. Sentence can be how much ever big, but you just focus on the core part of the sentence. It will be a very small one, I can tell you. You will have a great understanding. Manan Shreya, is this clear? Yeah. Yes, Rahul. Okay. Try one number.
So what the sentence is trying to say, scientists have recently discovered what they have discovered. This is all crap. A giant fungus. That's it. Now this is that. What is this that? A pronoun which is referring to giant fungus. Now they are trying to describe you what is giant fungus. That is inter own filigree of mushrooms and root like tentacles. That's it. Spawned by single fertilized. What is being spawned by single fertilized spore? Don't you feel root like tentacles are being spawned by single fertilized spore? Spawned by single fertilized spore some 10,000 years ago and, and looks for parallelism. Simple logic. You have used spawned as an adjective before and there should be an adjective after and. Extending. Extending is an adjective. Simple logic. For more than 30 acres of soil in the Mexican forest. Now, Harin, tell me, extension of root under the soil is under our control or not under our control? It is not under our control. So it should be extending as an adjective. Extended as an adjective will be wrong. C is an adjective. A is also an adjective. But A is the right answer. Extends. This is a verb. And before and we have used adjective. So after and we have to use adjective. Verb would be wrong, not parallel. It extended anyways. You don't have to use any pronouns and all. What is it referring to? Is extending is a verb. This is wrong. So A is the right answer. You just have to ensure that read sentences very slowly initially. Do not rush it up at all. Read the entire sentence, understand what is essential part, what is non-essential part when you are doing initially. I'll tell you how should the question be done. So, so like class, in, yeah. in D, it says it extended. So here we don't know what this it refers to, right? It refers to an extended is also what it extended. Like it ext extended is also wrong right. because this is a verb. We say it extended from A to B something. Let's so say it if, if it's written and, and it's extending for... Assuming. And also that is wrong because what is it's referring to? Should not, you should not never use any pronoun until it's required. Okay. Never extend ever. is wrong because it's intentional. Extend is wrong because it's a verb. Oh, okay. So parallelism, it, why it will be wrong? Because, because before and you have used adjective, after and you are using verb. Yeah, okay. And his extending is also a verb. So this is the way. Agreed? And is written. This type of question is one of the most common questions asked in GMAT. Read solutions 100 times. 10 times, sorry. Not 100 times. I'm so sorry. Try question number two, please. So this should just give you a clarity of how to think on the question. You should not rush up with the question initially. Moment you rush up initially with the question, it's all gone for a toss. Understand every bit of it. Because if you rush up, you will never be able to form a structure in your head as to what are the stuff that is looking to. And if you feel that for 1000 question, there will be 1000 different techniques and all, then it's all over. It is practically impossible. This is just... You should all do question in such a way that your entire structure is very clear. What are the stuff that needs to be looked upon? You are not supposed to be grammatically champion and all. Those things are wrong. Question number two, please. Take two minutes. Give me one minute, I'll get water and come. Please try. And today we are setting for a long time, guys. So don't go mad, please.
So what's the answer? C. All of you. So sometimes questions can be very simple, but the options, other options can make you think a lot, but don't get into that thought process at all. If you look into this sentence, what is the core part of the sentence? What is the essential part of the sentence? This all are bullshit. Was discovered more than 30 years ago, a four and a half inch animal found in Philippines and resembles like a hummingbird. These are all crap. The actual sentence is, Lina Shenbird has simmering metallic color on its head, a brilliant orange patch bordered with the red tufts in the center of its breast and a red eye. That's it. This is the actual sentence. So if you understand this, non-essential part should have no verb at all. It's straightforward logic. And two options can be straight away rejected because resembles is a verb. That is found. It resembles is a verb. But let's look into it properly. So this to you, please remove it. This makes no sense. And this also you remove it. This is also crap. Now see here. Lena Sunbird found in Philippines. So remember the example the coin the man found the coin found is a verb the coin found in the museum was beautiful found is an adjective over there simple logic so here found is an adjective so lina sunbird found in philippines and resembles like a hummingbird now there's an and which looks for parallelism so resembles is 100 percent a verb even if you do not understand essential part non-essential part this is wrong Found in Philippines and that comma resembling will come to this. Found in Philippines and resembling like a hummingbird. This is an adjective. Straight away sees the answer. That is found in Philippines and it resembles. So what is it referring back to? You don't know. It can refer back to Philippines. It can refer back to animal. It can refer back to Selena's words. So reference of it is 100% wrong. Even if you do not understand, because the point is, if you understand this is non-essential part, it should not have no verb. It should have no verb. So straight away you can mark it wrong. When you come down to E, it says that is found in Philippines and comma resembling. What is the sentence giving you the meaning? This is a disaster meaning. It says that because it was found in Philippines and that's the reason it is resembling like a hummingbird. It goes back to the entire clause. Even if it is found in India, it will resemble like a hummingbird. Even if it is found in America, it will resemble like a hummingbird. And the same logic goes for B. So C is the right answer. Agreed? So you have to understand these things very well. If you want, I can solve you one more question, but it takes a lot of time to wait. But it will be very clear to you. Don't worry. Just solve one more question and then we'll go ahead with the other questions. Other than this, I don't know. There's a lot of questions we'll do. Oh, but this is the one. one two, three. Uh, can you do question number 17 for me, please? All of you, take two minutes. That's it. Now I'm, uh, this is the last question. We'll do all these questions. We'll do 100 questions from the next class. So it will be very clear. But try doing question number 17, please.
<coughs> Hold on, sir. What's the answer, guys? Tell us. D, okay. D, sure. Fine. So first of all, most of the purported health benefits we are talking of tea. We can't be comes, comes for sure. So these two are gone. It should be C, D, and E. Why C and E is wrong? If at all who has marked answer D, please tell me. Uh, that and that parallelism. That and that parallelism. Where is that and that parallelism? Man? A compound that. that. So that and that parallelism is only that and that parallelism comes into picture only when that is followed by a reporting verb. This is that which is referring to compounds. It's a compounds. It's okay. a pronoun which is referring to compounds. Akansha, so that's wrong logic. Okay. Tell me. Anyone, please. Simple. Think on the parallelism part, dude. We are doing parallelism, so I'm just asking you to think on the parallelism part. Please understand also is just a filler. Also, it has nothing to do in the sentence at all. It is just a filler. Compounds found in beta protein. What is found over here? The man found the coin found in the museum was beautiful. Found is an adjective. So compounds found in beta protein. This is hundred percent an adjective. This is hundred percent an adjective. And when you read when you read the sentence, compound found in beta protein, vitamin, vitamin C, and that inhibit. So always read the non-underlined part. The simple rule of doing sentence correction is that you have to read the entire sentence very properly. When you say that inhibit, to inhibit is a verb. So after and there is a verb which is non-underlined. So we can't challenge that at all. We are supposed to only think on the underlying part. So before and there should be a verb. So that are found, are found is a verb which is giving to you in option number D. That are found in vitamin protein. This is a verb and there's an and over here. There's a verb over here. So this is absolutely perfectly parallel. In question, in option number D and E, found is an adjective. So adjective and verb can't be parallel. Is that clear? Anyone, any doubt? Parendra, Gauri, Kulash? Clear, clear. Clear. Oh. clear. So this was all about adjective and adjective parallelism. But Harind, is this, that point is clear, Harind. When should you use ING form and ED form? That entire part of intention and non-intention. That has to be only done with respect of a question. When you are simply writing your sentence, use whatever adjective you want to use. So come down to question number 15. Question number 15 says verb and verb parallelism. So see here. Now we have read noun and noun parallelism. We have read adjective and adjective parallelism. It's verb and verb parallelism. Now. In fact, we just did compound that are found and that enabled. That is only verb and verb parallelism. So it says that if you have, if you're using and or but, there's a verb on the left hand side, you should be using verb on the right hand side. Simple logic of parallelism. That's it. Nothing else at all. So see here, the man is speaking at the event. Whenever I come down to this is speaking, 100% I know ING form alone are never a verb. So this is not a verb at all. If this is not a verb, this can either be adjective or noun. Agreed? So there is already a noun man. So speaking is 100% an adjective. You can remove this and read the man at the event talked about danger. So what? So man is speaking at the event. This is an adjective. Talked about danger. So what? This is verb. Cracked many jokes. This is verb. And looks for parallelism. Enthralled the audience. This is verb. So what we are looking here is a verb and verb parallelism question. The question. So the sentence is 100% right. Because this is right, because the correct, this is correct as speaking is an adjective and other underlined parts are verb in parallel form. So don't apply the blind parallelism and misinterpret it that speaking, talk, crack, insult are not parallel. They are not supposed to be parallel. I can't create a parallelism between adjective and a verb. That's never. This is an adjective which is written properly over here. But I say talk is parallel to crack, is parallel to insult. So do not try and create a parallelism that speaking is not parallel to talk. They are not supposed to be parallel. Here, talked is parallel to cracked, cracked is parallel to enthralled. enthralled. Speaking absolutely doesn't come into picture at all. A lot of guys go mad because they say speaking, talk, cracked, enthralled are not parallel. They are not supposed to be parallel considering speaking is an adjective. Abhishek, clear? Yes, sir. 
So, uh, anyone any doubt over here? Because we just did a question found in this is nothing but a adjective. This is verb and verb parallelism that are found. This is a verb and that inhibit. This is a verb. So verb and verb parallelism. This is what we did right. I hope it's clear now. Come down to question number eighteen. This I think we have already discussed. But again, now let's discuss it properly. It says the stock market crashed, which caused a lot of people to lose money. Do you think the sentence is right or wrong? If right, why? If wrong, why? Tell, tell, please tell. Speak something. It's wrong. Why? Because, because which refers back to stock market. What? Because. Because which refers back to uh, stock market. That's absolutely crap, Shusha. Oh, sorry. Uh... The point is, I've just told you. Be very sure that which is a pronoun. If it refers back to a noun. This is only valid for which. See, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to teach as less as possible. I've taught you for that, and then there's a second thing that I'm taught you which. So, if which refers back to a pronoun. You should ensure that there is no verb in between. Absolutely, and reference of which is decided by the clause that follows which. I'll clear this letter. The reference of which is decided by by clause that follows which. I'll clear this in the letter part. Raul, one thing. Yeah. This which refers to a noun. So you're saying between the noun and the which, there should be no verb, right? There should never, there should never a verb at all come over in. If it is coming, it means the reference is wrong, which will not refer to that particular noun. So imagine at this place, you can 100% say okay, which refers to a stock market and you can tell that, Rahul, this is not giving a correct meaning because stock market can't cause a lot of people to lose money. But the reference of which itself is wrong over here, which is not going back to stock market. Because between stock market and which there is a verb crashed. A lot of you might have studied that which exactly goes back to the immediate noun. Those things are all crap. It doesn't, it just doesn't, it doesn't hold true at all. I'll clear it. Agreed, Haran here. No, I have some confusion. Please tell me. What is the confusion? Class that some of the sentences that we did, right? Like uh, Dhoni is one of those cricketers who uh. So who so has where... a can go to anywhere? Who it? There's the only rule for which. That if which goes back to a pronoun, there should be no verb in between. No, sorry, which go, which as a pronoun goes back to a noun, there should be no verb in between. Other other pronoun you leave it, it will go hundred percent. Now imagine here itself you see no, the stock market crashed and it caused a lot of people to lose money. So obviously it as a pronoun is going back to stock market over here. This is fine. This is just a rule for which are That's it. Rest other pronoun can refer back. No issue at all. Mm. Okay. okay. Clear? Okay. So like here, the stock market crashed and it caused a lot of people to lose money. So it as a pronoun is going back to stock market. But this sentence is wrong. Why? Because the stock market can't cause people to lose money. The meaning is faulty. Like here you look, the stock market crashed. So it is a stock market that crashed. And it is a stock market that caused people to lose money. So parallelism why the sentence is absolutely parallel because it is going back to one subject stock market. A stock market crashed and a stock market caused a lot of people to lose money, but it is not stock market that caused people to lose money. So a lot of people say, Rahul, it is 100% parallel statement, but just being parallel, the meaning should come out to be right one. No? So that's what people say is that if you look into the meaning, things will be 100% fine. But trust me, the basic rules, if you don't know, it will be very hard to understand the meaning. It's, it will be very hard. So these are the sentences which looks to be very right while reading, but it gives you a very disaster meaning. The actual right one is the stock market crashed, causing a lot of people to lose money. Now, this is going back to the entire clause. So, this is giving you a meaning. It was a crash in the stock market that was responsible for the people to lose money. It is not stock market that caused people to lose money. So, it's 100% cause and effect situation. Look into it. If ever you read a sentence and you exactly get to understand this is a cause and effect situation, always ensure effects starts with ing form. There should be no ambiguity at all. And moreover, meaning wise, also, this is the only sentence which is giving you correct meaning that it was a crash in the stock market that led people to lose money. It was not stock market that led people to lose money. So, this should be the structure of sentence. But also saying that stock market crashing caused a lot of people to lose money would be correct, right? Stock market crashing caused a lot of people to lose money. Lose money, yeah. Stock market name don't it should be written in a cause and effect situation. This is how it should be written. Should not write that way. 
Okay. A stock market crashing. What is crashing over there? This is an adjective that is referring to stock market. Yeah. The stock market crashing. Stock. So again, you are saying that stock market caused a lot of people to lose money. No, I'm but saying crashing, because crashing is. What imagine is you are saying to the stock market crashing. Yeah. Caused a lot of people. So what is this crashing? This is an adjective that is referring to stock market. You are actually making a sentence: stock market caused a lot of people to lose money. Which is wrong. Okay. So the structure, whenever you write a cause and effect situation, ensure that effect should start with ing form. That's a normal way to go ahead with it. Agreed? So, so uh, Rahul, yeah. uh, is causing, causing uh, is what an adjective, how, if, if I want to look at from that perspective. Huh. So like, let's say stock market crashed. This is a sort of a cause. This entire sentence is a sort of a cause, right? Okay. And what is the effect? Lot people lost money. Okay. So whenever you use a cause and effect situation, whenever it comes down to, always ensure that effect should start with ing form. Like remember, we have read one sentence. I'll come down to it noun and noun parallelism. Now it will be very clear. Uh, ing form. One say. Check here. Let's say the firm investor invested unwisely for three consecutive years. So this is the entire thing is a cause. Event. The investment done by investors, unwise investment done by investor. This is a cause. And what is the effect? Bank collapse. So whenever you look into a cause and effect situation, ensure that effects always starts with ING form. This is a structure of writing the sentence. You okay. cannot write the form investor invested unwisely for three consecutive years and it led up, it led a complete and it led to a complete collapse of bank. So it again is a pronoun which is going back to investors, something like that. You can't say and which led to the complete collapse of bank. That's the wrong way to write the sentence. It should be leading or leading to a complete collapse of bank. Here, leading is going back to the entire clause. It is not an investor who was responsible for the collapse of bank. It was an unwise investment done by investor that led to the collapse of bank. So in that case, always use ING form after the call. Agreed. But these things, a lot thing, a lot of these things will come into the question, and that is the moment. So, <laughs> the entire purpose on, of doing this is that when we do the question, you should not be lost. That's all, because in a question, all these reasonings will come. Hundred percent, it will come. There is no doubt that it will not come. And these are the reasoning that we should minimum know. If we don't know this, it will be a problem. Uh, Rahul, I just have a question with the same previous example of of the stock market crash. Hmm. Tell me. Um, here, here I didn't understand the which part. You're saying the which is the wrong pronoun that's no, no, used. All I'm trying to say you is remember, always remember one thing. Simple logic. And this is a rule, Srisha. We can't overdo it. But there are some grammatical rules which should we follow. All I'm trying to say you is which as a pronoun if it goes back to a noun. Yeah. Here you feel that it's going back to a noun, right? Yeah. So if you have understood, if you have felt that which as a pronoun is going back to a noun, you should understand that there should be no verb in between. Yeah. Now here the crashed you have found is a which crashed is a verb. Agreed? Is crashed a verb or not? Yeah, it is. So it means reference of which is wrong, which can't go back to a stock market. So the reference of which in the sentence is absolutely invalid. Got it. But if it was the stock market crash? Crash is also a verb. The whole point is if which goes back to a pronoun, which goes back to a noun, you should ensure that there should be no verb in between. If there is a verb, then that which will not go refer back to that particular noun. That's it. Agreed? Yeah, I assume... read... yeah. Sorry? Like... Wait, so it can be the stock market which crashed? Oh, that can be. That is absolutely fine. But why you need to put a pronoun over there when you can straight away say stock market crash? You should be far from pronoun as much as you can. 100%. It's a normal rule. Do not, do not complicate it at all. It's simple says if which as a pronoun goes back to a noun, there should be no verb in between. There is no hardcore understanding over here. If there is a verb, it means reference of which is wrong. This can't go back to this noun. Simple logic. So the sentence at the bottom which says... Uh... Um, stock market crashed, comma causing a lot of people. Market, and it caused a lot of people is also wrong. Yeah, because this is giving you a meaning that it is going back to stock market here now. Now there's no rules for it. 
it 100% is going back to a stock market but the meaning is coming wrong that stock market caused a lot of people to lose money that will be crap yeah i understand it is not a stock market that caused the people to lose money it was a crash in the stock market that caused a lot of people to lose money okay i hope okay. it's very clear yeah perfect come down to question number 19th now what we have done noun and noun parallelism adjective adjective parallelism verb verb parallelism there is also something called clause and clause parallelism there is also something called prepositional phrase and prepositional phrase parallelism so entire structure should be very clear if you write and or but so when you say mumbai houses 20 million people don't you feel this is a clause the cultural capital of india this is not a clause this is a phrase now there is a and has a lot of potential mumbai has a lot of potential for new commerce this is again a clause and this and looks for parallelism simple logic so after and you have put a parallelism so before and there should be a no, after and you have put a clause before and there should be a whole clause so mumbai houses 20 million people is a clause so to make this phrase a clause the cultural capital of india in sort of verb so mumbai houses 20 million people Mumbai is the cultural capital of India, and Mumbai has a lot of potential for new commerce. This is hundred percent a right statement. The subject, entire parallelism goes back to one subject that is Mumbai. But there are different ways to interpret this statement, guys. A lot of people say, "Okay, well, Mumbai houses twenty million people, the cultural capital of India." If I want to make this parallel, then again, it should be written, "Mumbai houses twenty million people, the cultural capital of India." and mumbai has a lot of potential for new commerce with dreams comma known as mayanagari of india put some put some sort of adjective here also known as mayanagari of india now this is this is also 100% fine the point is to ensure whatever structure you write before and the same structure should be written after and concentrate on noun adjective verb parallelism rest everything will come into picture for sure is this clear anyone any doubt i hope no question number 20 since the teacher introduced a classroom reward system this is all crap students have begun paying closer attentions and students have stopped causing disruption this is 100 percent parallel statement this and looks for parallel the subject uh, it goes back to only one subject that is students students have begun paying and students have stopped causing disruptions in the class but what this sentence is trying to say you ki while you are writing the first clause students have begun paying so you are writing you are in trying to introduce a sort of a list ki students have begun paying closer attention that is a completing homework that is b following direction that is c and students have stopped causing so parallelism why this is 100% parallel a student have started doing something a student have stopped causing something but the point is ki whenever you try and introduce a sort of a list into the sentence a list into a statement ensure that the last element of the list should 100% end with and so there should be a and over here also so imagine this is the right statement please read this this and is to complete the list and this and is for parallelism please check anyone any doubt it's a simple these are normal rules now now whatever we are going to do is rules which needs to be followed <coughs> all the concepts are done so please ensure whenever you try and write so gmat does not test you on syntax and all but these are the very minimum very minimum that you should know imagine this there is a something called a and b this is absolutely fine these are two lists but if you write two if you write three elements in the list it should be a comma b comma and c so please put comma before and if you are writing four element a comma b comma c comma and d so put comma before the and that's important but be very sure gmat will not test you on syntax and all but there are some uh there are some mocks if you give of manhattan and all these are these are the thing that are tested sometimes for sure and you should know this that's the correct structure of writing so it's not about being tested or not tested you should know so when you say ki students are beginning paying closer attentions see it The students have begun paying closer attention. This is a comma completing homework. This is B, and there is a comma, and then there is a and following direction. Is that very clear? Any doubt? I hope it's clear. Yes, sir. I have. Uh, yeah, please tell me. No? I have a doubt that by the stop causing distraction is not being considered in the in the list. 
नहीं बिकॉज बिकॉज दीज आर टू डिफरेंट एक्शन सिंपल अभिषेक दीज आर टू लाइक इमेजन इफ आई से अभिषेक इज स्टार्टेड वर्क कॉमा फिनिस्ड वर्क डो यू थिंक इज दिस राइट स्टेटमेंट बिकॉज दीज आर टू डिफरेंट एक्शन बींग डन बाई अभिषेक अभिषेक हेज स्टार्टेड वर्क सो वेन यू वेन वन सब्जेक्ट डज टू डिफरेंट एक्शन देर शुड बी अ कंजेक्शन इन बिटवीन ऑलवेज so there are two different action ki students have begun doing something students have stopped causing something so these two actions should be 100% conjugated should be attached with some sort of conjunction that is and or but because imagine if i say abhishek has started work comma finished work that's correct statement abhishek has started work and he has finished work because started is a different action finished is a different action clear yes sir clear no perfect anyone any gauri any doubt yeah i have a doubt i am you know reading novels and newspapers i've never seen a comma before and in this it's no, just you, like you now no it no 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 you will 100% see why they never related to it now you see it you go and read economics Econo so guys i'll give you one thing i don't know you don't have a you don't have a whatsapp group no i'll give you one uh, so when we are done with the sentence correction economics is one magazine It's not me who's telling you. You go and read the disbrief, disbrief of the people in GMAT club who has got seven seventy, seven sixty, seven fifty. Ninety percent of the people will say that reading economics helps a lot, and it actually helps a lot. I can tell you. But this is a costly one. I'll send you people a uh, masses where you just install the install the software in your browser, and you will be able to read it for free of cost. Or else it will be a costly one. It, it charges you like three thousand per quarter. It's a costly magazine. But I can promise you, once we are done with the sentence correction, you should hundred percent go and read Economist because the way Economist write its sentences, RC passes in GMAT or CR passes in GMAT, the passes that will be written, it will be one hundred percent based on the Economist. And when you read this magazine after is doing sentence correction, I promise you the understanding of yours will be so 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 good you can't imagine. And this is a very addictive magazine to be very frank. If you have not read and if you read this, it is. I mean, you go to any B school, they ask you to read this magazine for sure. Hundred percent, they'll ask you to read. And if you read it from before, it's very addictive. Very addictive. It is not that like I'm the person who is least bothered. Like I don't understand finance one bit of it. But just by name, that Economist is not a finance magazine. It gives when you look into like I'll just open it for you. Wait, you just see once how the structure of this magazine is. so i have like i before i had the subscription but now i have installed that browser so when you go to weekly edition it is such a beautiful magazine that you will forget reading everything except this magazine so when you come down to this weekly edition <clears throat> you see here topic of the week it is politics business cartoons week corner and the best part is you can read about every country in the world now they have discussed about asia what is happening in asia they'll give you ki rahul gandhi and all these things In Asia, Philippines comes, but they don't give a separate topic to India. That's a stupidity. They have given a separate topic about China. You can read about China. They have given you a separate topic about United States. Every week, you and you have, you, and this is every weekly magazine. They give you a United States a topic about United States. They give you Middle East and Africa. Like, like um, I can say you that I was a scholar of Middle East. I love reading about Middle East a lot, lot. At least when ISIS and all came into picture, I was very much intrigued about here what exactly how it happens, how what happens and all. so i have read middle east <clears throat> a lot but this is one magazine if you like finance so this is america matlab latin america they have discussed about europe whole europe britain separate topic they have given you if you want to go ahead you you are a business person who who wants to read finance trust me there is no better article than this place you will get and the best part about this is when you read one article you read about india or anything i can promise you you will get to understand what is a positive construction you will get to understand what is modifier you will get to understand what is subjunctive construction everything will be over there and i promise you uh, this gauri you go and read the magazine again and you see there will be comma for sure you might not never you might have never realized that but it will be for sure yeah because i've read a lot and this is the first this is new it's new information to me so it's just so weird to realize this are also checked it up it says that you must put a comma before and when it connects to independent clauses now there are independent clauses uh, here in the sentence when you say that the students hmm. where did it go oh sorry it said students um, i can't find that um, students have, this is this is ha ah, right correct so they completing homework and following directions you saying that these are two 
independent clauses are mm-hmm. they related so if at all imagine if students are paying closer attention and you remove this the entire stuff then you don't need comma at all the students have begun paying closer attention and students have stopped causing disruption during the lesson then you don't need comma at all yeah because the and comma are only when you introduce a list into the statement so here before this and we are trying to do what we are trying to introduce a sort of a list that the student right. are being paying begun paying closer attention this is a completing homework this is b and following direction this is c all right so before all right. this element c you have to put insert and okay yeah. understood so i'll i'll send you just whatsapp me and i'll whatsapp each one of you the uh, economist ka crap just install in your browser and you can read it for free of course rahul i have a doubt uh, yeah tell it, me. there is some confusion between the usage of commas and semicolon can you please give some i'll I'll, I'll come i'll come down to that semicolon is for a independent clause like let's say rahul and rohit are moving in the park they are okay. smart guys so when you have two independent clause on both the sides you use semicolon when you have one dependent clause and one independent clause use comma although he is poor like let's say although ulash is poor but comma he is the most smartest guy i have ever met in my life so although ulash is poor to although ulash is poor when i say this is a dependent clause this is not an independent clause so semicolon is used when there is two independent clause on both the sides but understand If they are independent only in structure ulas they are not independent in logically they are 100% dependent on each other like when i say rahul and rohit are moving in the park they seems to be a smart guy so who is they going back to who is going back to rahul and rohit right you can't question over here ki what is they going back to because if you question that then there is no use of semicolon you put a full stop if you want to have a separate clause completely because full stop ensures that once you have written ki ulas is a good guy full stop then now whatever in the world whichever subject you want to talk about in the world you can talk but if you put and or but semicolon comma it means ki your sentence will 100% relate to the first clause for sure and semicolon can come before and also no ha ah, semicolon is not about and and uh, before and and after and it's all about ki there should be two independent clause when i say rahul and rohit are moving in the park are moving in park now i want to talk about rahul and rohit again i can and this is an independent clause right rahul and rohit are moving in the park now i put semicolon over here and i say they seems to be a smart guy so this is complete independent clause this is a complete independent clause but log structure wise they are independent but logically they are dependent on each other because they is going back to what rahul and rohit only so semicolon has nothing to do with and and all of that semicolon is all about the clauses on both the side should be structurally strictly complete independent and logically they should be dependent but it will come in the it, it's it's there in the handout don't worry it will come okay i put it in the last semicolon now so question number 21 guys now question number 21 is a place where you should not use your head at all a bit also not it simple says whenever you writing a sentence future with respect to past use would you might always prefer using this always now there is a lot of question that you can ask me what i'll answer everything but again i'm telling you don't use head in this question for sure it says in 1975 sippy produced a film that became the biggest blockbuster this is not how you should be writing your sentences with respect to jima the sentence is 100% wrong so in 1975 sippy produced a film that became the biggest blockbuster that indian cinema had ever seen now see here one month ago he said i'll come next weekend this is what we speak in daily life that rahul has said that he will meet me next week that's crap you should not be saying this sentence this is called direct speech and gmat does not test you on direct speech at all absolutely no so this statement is wrong gmat says whenever you use future with respect to past you should 100% use would now see one month ago he said i'll come next week one month ago he said this sentence should be written in this way <clears throat> that one month ago he said that he would come next week or following week whatever so whenever you use past and you are trying trying to say future about it always use would future with respect to past in gmat should go to would never to will at all never ever so a lot of people now questions me here ki rahul what the hell are you telling this is something which is already done i think they are talking about sole movie right or sole movie was bef- it's or something different movie sole movies was in 80s right or 70s no 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 it's, it is talking about sole movie it was yeah sole was in 75 yeah yeah 75 oh. 70- Sole was in eighties, man. No, 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 no. Seventy-five. 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 Se
tiny member ha so see ho oh, sepi producer film that became now lot of people say me ki rahul oh this is a this is a statement where we already know that this here it has become a uh, it has become the biggest blockbuster then in that case you write a simple statement ki sole was one of the biggest blockbuster in his cinema ever since don't write sentence in this way ki sepi produce a film and it became now you can 100% question me ki it has actually became rahul then you just say ki sole was one of the biggest blockbuster that indian cinema had ever seen do not write a sentence in this way you say produce and it became that's crap you should not be writing that's a simple rule of jima whatever now we are studying is rules guys all the concepts are done so you will have to follow it if you want to say if you lot of people question me ki what the hell are you trying to say rahul this is already known to us if it is known to you you simply write a statement ki sole was one of the biggest blockbuster that indian cinema had ever seen why you want to create a statement ki sepi produced and it became that's this is something which is not acceptable in gmat gmat says that if you have used a past tense and with respect to past tense that you are right, trying to write something future about it you should use would so actual sentence if at all this is a sentence that needs to be correct it should be written in this form sepi produced a film that would become the biggest blockbuster that in cinema it was so there is no much logic in this statement no much learning also you should follow it that's it whenever you write future with respect to past company announced that they would take over to other company you can't say company announced that they will take over with other company something and all whatever if you use past and you are trying to denote a future ensure that you use would nothing else that's a normal rule that should be followed and you should follow it there is no point questioning it so now guys come down to question number 22 interesting one we have done what we have follow we have we have learned three uses of that right so uses of that can be a lot don't worry but i can promise you 90% of time you will be able to understand what is being what is the uses of that so first was what that can be used as a pronoun second word second was that is followed by a reporting verb if that is followed by a reporting verb that and that parallelism in the sentence is compulsory and i have told you not to remember anything you have to look into the structure of sentence and figure out for yourself if that's a reporting verb or what it is do not remember anything that prove is a reporting verb reported is a reporting verb no the third use of that comes into picture over here it says that followed by a futuristic verb you are not supposed to even remember futuristic verb nothing that followed by a futuristic verb if that is followed by a futuristic verb subjunctive construction in the sentence is necessary and what is subjunctive construction it says that there is a futuristic verb after futuristic verb there should be that and then it should be a root form of the verb or be this is a construction so guys we will be studying four constructions for gmat for sentence correction and constructions may look initially tough to you but i promise in, in within this month itself it will get very very fine for you very fine for you because in and in construction problem you are not supposed to look into why four answers are wrong if you understand this is a this is a statement this option is following this construction just mark the answer and move on because constructions are 100% followed in jma and this is a certain rule so there are four construction that we'll be studying one is subjunctive we'll be doing it now <clears throat> the second is abstract noun construction third is absolute phrase we'll do all this stuff only and fourth is a positive the most important a positive so what we are doing right now is a subjunctive construction i'll tell these names so many times that you will remember in the class only don't worry so what is exactly subjunctive construction subjunctive construction says futuristic verb should come after futuristic verb there should be that and then should be either a root form of the verb or it should be a be there are these these two words so if that is followed by a futuristic verb subjunctive construction is necessary you are not supposed to understand what is futuristic verb you are supposed to look into the construction of a statement but little bit understanding if you do it will be much much beautiful so see here it says the supreme court decree decree means order 
imagine if i order you to study you will go and then you will study right so there is a future involved there is an element of future involved in it i ordered that you go and study after i order you will study i recommend that you go to this restaurant after i after i recommend you will go to that restaurant right i propose that uh, you should do something so after i propose you will do it right i demand money from you after i demand you give me money so there is a element of future involved in it <clears throat> so imagine i believe that gauri should get into harvard imagine so when i say i believe that do you think there is any element of future involved in it it is my belief that she should get into harvard now wherever she get that none of my business at all but i believe that so when you believe something that's not a futuristic construction at all so futuristic verb is something where there is a element of future involved in it and if you do not understand this then the structure of sentence should make a lot of sense to you because please understand i'll come down to i'll come down with respect to question now it says the supreme court ordered that he should take charge of the situation i insist that after i insist you will be quiet i insist that she should be quiet we have been always writing such sentences in our life right always but this is 100% wrong 1000% this is wrong please understand in this in this sentence there is a futuristic reporting verb or a futuristic condition followed by the word that then the next verb in the sentence is expressed in the root form or it should be word be in its root form or it should be word be the supreme court ordered ordered is a futuristic verb followed by word that ordered that this is absolutely fine he should take please understand this is the next verb and this is not the root form so the verb is take the root form of the verb the root form of the take is take all other form took taken takes taking should take will take to take are called non root form be very sure about it so he should take is wrong the supreme court ordered that he take charge of the situation these are all crap that you write he should take charge of the situation i insist that she should be quiet is wrong i insist that be quiet i insist that she be quiet not should be so all other forms such as is all other verbs such as is are am was were shall will be shall be whatever the root form is be <clears throat> so the correction to the sentence would become the supreme court ordered that he take charge of the situation should take is wrong i insist that she should be quiet is wrong i insist that she be quiet now there are some examples given to you over and suggested that he should go to chinese restaurant this is crap and suggested when i suggest you to go only then you will go so there is a element of future involved in it and suggested that he go to the chinese restaurant not should go i suggest that he should study this is wrong i suggest that he study so leave this this is crap don recommended that john should join the committee wrong <clears throat> don recommended that john join the committee he often asks that she should bring a tape, tape recorder wrong he often asks that when i ask you to bring something you will bring there is an element of future in it he often asks that she should bring the tape recorder wrong he often asks that she bring a tape recorder i propose that ami should apologize to the mark wrong i propose that ami apologize to the mark alexander never insists that michael should call her michael call her and says that michael should call is wrong call her i insist that chairman should resign wrong i insist that chairman resign so please read these sentences and you will have a great idea of what exactly is this like what is verb what is futuristic verb and all but imagine this is something which is not clear to you it means that we'll have to look into the structure of sentence now so now it comes down to the question so i have i have already made you solve question number 5 question number 6 question number 7 and question question number 7 but still can you please take 3 minutes or let's take 4 minutes solve question number 7 again and question number 8 again question number 7 is already done but try to enforce the knowledge as to what we have done what reasoning we had and then try to solve question number 8 it will be very clear take 4 minutes to this nothing more than that i'll start speaking at 12:30 it is 12:34 Okay, I'll get water and come.
what the answer? In construction problem, you don't have to understand why other answers are wrong. But when you're doing in home, you can always do that going on. Because wrong answers are wrong always. So seventh number is what? Straight away, because when we read this statement, however much my voters may agree that there is a waste in government and the second clause starts with that, it simple means that this question is testing on us. This question is testing on that and that parallel. Now I can come down to a conclusion that report agree is a reporting work. Simple logic. So this that this that A B C D is wrong. In option number E, that is not followed by a reporting work. It is being followed by some sort of a noun. So this is not testing on that and that parallelism. So this is wrong. A is the right one. I have given you other reasoning also in the last class. You can go ahead and read that. Now come down to question number eight. It says that our first job is to read the entire sentence in one of the most stunning reversals in the history of marketing. This is all crap. The Coca-Cola company in, in the Coca-Cola company in July 1985 yielded to thousands of fresh consumers demanding that it should bring back the original Coke formula. Who was demanding to bring back the original Coke formula? Think. The consumers. So don't you feel this should be in form of a verb? This is hundred percent a verb, but ing form alone are never a verb. So a and b is gone. Now come down to C. A lot of people tell me that Rahul sir, C is hundred percent parallel because Coca-Cola company in July nineteen eighty five yielded to thousands of freight consumers. Yielded. This is a verb. To thousands of freight consumer and their demand, their demand to bring back the original Coke formula. A lot of people tell me the sentence is parallel because there's a verb over here. There's a verb over here. Please tell me is this right or wrong. If right, why? If wrong, why? Right, obviously, because it's verb and verb. Tell. Please, Polo. I would think uh, they didn't yield to the consumers. They yielded to the consumers' demand. So It's simple. Don't get into that. Uh, Can you uh, repeat your question again, Rahul? I'm just saying ki and is there and there's a verb before and there's a verb after and is it parallel yes or no it should be parallel no mm -hmm. what I've told you parallelism always goes back to one subject yielded is a action right. of what Coca-Cola company right yeah and demand is action of what consumers consumers correct so yes. it is not parallel got it in parallelism, things should go back to one subject. So these are the stuff that you should look upon it when you are doing in home. But in this question, you can straight away mark the answer and move on. Now you are left with D and E. Who demanded that, this is futuristic verb, that it bring back the original Coke formula, not it should bring back the original Coke formula. That's crap. Who demanded it to? So this is not following the subjunctive construction. So subjunctive construction comes into picture. It says futuristic verb plus that plus root form of the verb or B. So you will have to make a note of all these things. I hope you people are making note while you are reading the essay rules. It's extremely important. If you don't make notes, you will not remember all this stuff. But it will happen. While solving question, you don't worry. I'll tell you how should you solve the question. I hope it's clear. This is the right answer. Anyone, any doubt? Parendra, Ulash, Abhishek? Oh, Manan, clear. Shreya? Clear round. Clear round. Perfect. Now let's come down to so just read here, here they, they have given you a good number of verbs. Propose that C should be appointed. Should be appointed is wrong. C be appointed. Their main demand was that the law should, should be dropped is wrong. The law should be dropped. It is crucial that, crucial that, crucial, I don't know, whatever it is. Please read it all. Now come down to the following tense, some tense and all. He came at 5 p.m. Now, normal tense. There is nothing, no logic involved. This is how the tenses are made. This is how tenses are followed. He came at 5 p.m. So you are standing, you are at 10 p.m. You are making a sentence. He came at 5 p.m. Action is started and finished in the past. So this is called simple past. Straightforward. I lived in US for three years. Now we are in 2023. It might be a case that you people might have lived in US from 2015 to 2018. 
This is just one action that started in the past, finished in the past. I lived in US for three years. You have your action is already over. So this is called simple past again. Now imagine I lived in US for three years. This is a simple past. But when you say I have lived in US for three years, what is this? This is called present perfect. So please understand have and has does what? Have and has brings actions to present. When you say I lived in US for three years, it's a simple past. The action started finished. When you say I have lived in US for three years, it's simple means that from last three years till now, till present, you were living in US. Have and has always bring actions to present. Always. These are called ongoing actions. But listen, there are some things which will be clear only while solving question. But you should just know this. I'll, I'll, I'll take all these namings, ongoing actions and all. I'm trying my best not to take any grammatical name. What else I can do tell? So this is called present perfect. And past perfect is what? When there are two actions in the past, the teacher came to know that John had cheated in the test. So John cheated is one action. Teacher came to know his other action. The action that happens before, John might have cheated before. So action that happens before, you need to write had plus third form of the verb. We have done it in before. So this is called present past perfect. There are two actions in this past. John cheated earlier action. Teacher came to know later action. There's a clear time difference between these two events. In such situation, the event happening earlier is written with had plus third form of the verb. And the event happening later is, in later is written with a simple past. Thing. That's it. This is called past perfect. So this is one usage of past perfect. The other usage is what? When you define a point of time. There are two ways in which past perfect tense can be used. One is when there are two events in the past, in the sentence. And one is when a point of time is defined. That's it. When a point of time is defined. So imagine by age of 25, he had won. Had plus third form is always past perfect. Had alone is a simple past. You can say, Raul, I had breakfast. So you finished your breakfast. You already had action started, finished. So that's a simple past. But had plus third form is always past perfect. So by age of 25, he had won 10 gold medals. He might have won gold medals even at the age of 30, 35. Doesn't matter to us at all. But we are defining a point of time. We are only talking about by age of 25, he had won 10 gold medals. So you will have to use past perfect. Had plus third form. India has progressed, had progressed, progressed throughout 20th century. Please understand we are in 21st century. We are almost two decades. We are, we are more than two decades ahead of 20th, uh, 20th century. 20th century is what? 1900 to 1999. This is 20th century. 21st century is what? 2000 to 2099. So none of us will be alive, I think, for 22nd century. But still, some of you may be alive if you are very fit and all. So India progressed throughout 20th century. So 20th century is just one point of time in the past. So it's a simple past. You can't say India had has progressed. Has progressed means till now. But we are only talking about 20th century. We are talking about till 1999. Had progress, there's just one action in the past. So we can't use had progress. So this is wrong. So progress, it's a simple past. Is this clear? Anyone in doubt? Now, again, they have explained you past perfect. The patient had uh, died. Yeah. Raul, just one thing. Yeah. Like normally in day-to-day -day parlance, we say I had breakfast. So there are like no two events. So That's a is simple it... past tense. No, no. So past perfect is always had plus third form. Remember. Okay. If you use had alone, that's a simple past. I had breakfast. I had my lunch. So that action is already done. Had alone is always a simple past. Okay. So past... if I say I had gone somewhere, so that should precede uh, some event. Like there should be two events. 100%. Okay. 100%. Only then you should be using it. Else no. Okay. Patient had no, died. About... Yeah, this time. Uh, yesterday, uh, like in last class, you have mentioned the example that John cheated. A uh, teacher came to know that John John had cheated. Had cheated. But this is what. This is the same there thing. is no time frame in this, but had cheated is used. So there is a time frame in this. In this, this is there. No, it's not about time frame. It's about two actions should be there, Allah. Teacher came to know this is one action. But and you have mentioned action. here that time frame should be there. Must be there. In past perfect. 
नहीं नहीं देर आर टू वेज टू यूज पास्ट परफेक्ट वन इज इफ देर आर टू इवेंट्स इन द पास्ट यूल यूज पास्ट परफेक्ट एंड अदर इज वन पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम इज डिफरेंट दैट्स इट सो दीज आर टू डिफरेंट यूजेज ऑफ पास्ट परफेक्ट ओके 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 so like imagine this one the same thing again question number 24 the dog the patient had died before the doctor reached so patient had died is one action doctor reached is another action so this is fine because first patient died and then doctor reached so there are two two actions in the past the patient died earlier doctor reached later clear time difference between the two events in such situation the event happening earlier is written had plus third form event happening later is written simple past form so imagine again now the time frame is again defined so again you will use past perfect simple logic by age of 21 akbar had ruled india for 8 years you can't say akbar ruled india and akbar might have ruled india at the age of 30 also at the age of 40 also at the age of 50 also we don't know about but if i define if i define a point of time that by age of 21 you have to use past perfect akbar had ruled india for 8 years imagine he, imagine he was ruling india at the age of 13 years can you imagine Then past is gone. So, uh, uh, like instead of writing twenty uh, one, hmm. like if someone mentions a particular year, like that also is fine. Like imagine here, the moment you by mention the time frame, yeah, absolutely. Like imagine that by nineteen ninety one, jazz music became or had become very popular in India. It should be always had become very popular in India. Okay, okay. Okay. Hmm. So there's a special note on the uses of had. This is just for your own curiosity. You can read it. But there is nothing at all. It says had alone is always a simple past. Had plus third form is past perfect tense. The uses of had and had these are all for your own curiosity. Go on, you read it. He had had a great fun. One had is a tense. One had is a verb. That's it. You can read this by yourself. It is raining for three hours. It has rained for three hours. It has been raining for three hours. So when I say for sentence, when I say a sentence, it has it has rained for three hours. Imagine we are. At 10 p.m., we are making this sentence today. Train for three hours. It means it started and finished. So it's a simple pass. It's straightforward. Now, when you say it rained for it rained for three hours, this is simple pass. But when you say it has rained for three hours, what does this mean? That from last three hours till now it is raining. It was raining. So has and have brings actions to present. Always remember. And this is called present perfect. Now, when you say it is raining for three hours, this is what I was telling you. See, when it is you say it is raining for three hours, this is clearly wrong, very much wrong, because by definition, continuous tense only denotes a moment of time, never a period. When I say it is raining, it means exactly at this moment, exactly now. We are not sure whether it was raining five minutes earlier or it will be, it will be raining five minutes later. So this is called present continuous tense. And what is past continuous? If we say when I peeped inside his room. He was sleeping. Now, in this sentence, we are sure about only one moment. I only form denotes of one. Moment. Be very sure about it. We are sure only about one moment. Only at the moment when I peeped inside his room. We don't know whether he was sleeping one moment earlier or will he be sleeping one moment later or not. This we don't. Know. So this is called past continuous. And when I say it is raining, when I say it is raining, this is called present continuous. That's it. Now, when you make a sentence, it has been raining for three hours. What does this mean? This is just one action that started in the past, has continued till this moment in the present. This conforms to the diagram. Really. But be very sure: present perfect continuous, present perfect, whatever you say, present perfect progressive or continuous. This is never tested in grammar because it makes sentence very wordy. There is a different way to write a sentence. This is never tested in grammar. Never. You can be very sure about it. Now, guys, ha, huh, not twenty seventh number. It says although it stopped raining, has stopped raining. I am still feeling cold. So when you say I am still feeling, we still don't. It still denotes what one moment of time. So imagine if you make a sentence, remove has stop. If you write a sentence, although it has stopped raining, I am still feeling cold. Imagine you are making the sentence ten p.m. at night, and stopped raining ten o'clock in the morning. Do you really feel the sentence is making any sense to you? And you say 10 p.m. the night. I am feeling cold. Why the hell you have to say although it stopped raining 10 o'clock in the morning and I am still feeling cold? Why you want to associate your cold with rain? If you if you want to do that, then you should write has stopped raining. Because if I simple say stopped raining, it might be that rain has stopped 10 a.m. in the morning and you are making this statement at 10 p.m. in the night. This is an absolutely straight statement. 
if i told you want to make such a statement where you want to create your uh, relation between cold and rain you will have to say although it has stopped raining has stopped raining means what right now it stopped raining and you are still feeling cold so it should be has stopped there is no point of you saying although it stopped raining and i am still feeling cold what what exactly this means because when you say stopped raining it might stop raining 10 10 10 hours before so why are you trying to create your cold with respect to rain just say you are feeling cold but when you are trying to create a relation between the cold and rain you have to say has stopped raining has stopped means it has stopped raining right now in this present moment has stopped raining and you are feeling cold which is absolutely acceptable agreed now what i have told you there are four construction that we have to study the first was subjunctive i'll write it so many times so that you remember and subjunctive is what futuristic verb plus that plus root form of the verb or be this is subjunctive construction the second construction that we are studying is an abstract noun construction now this is a place i'll make very clear what is which reference and all abstract noun construction what is abstract noun construction it simple says guys that when you replace ambiguous pronoun when you replace a ambiguous pronoun with eligible noun when you replace a ambiguous pronoun with a eligible noun that construction is called abstract noun but what exactly it is we'll have to understand through question itself check here now so it says here the parent tried to explain this question says the parent tried to explain the risk involved in his hiking but it was useless now tell me what is it going back to think about it hitchhike Do you, think do you think explain hiking was useless? Explanation was useless. Absolutely, but explain is a verb, and try it is also a verb. So pronoun can never refer to a verb. Pronoun definition is should refer back to a noun. That's it. It very clearly says you this is a, this is a problem of implied pronoun. Here it tries to refer to explain or try. This is clearly wrong because you can hundred percent say Rahul White can't refer back to parent, but do you think the meaning will come parents was useless, which is crap. So it is hundred percent. It is trying to refer, go back to try or explain, but a pronoun never can never refer to a verb. It's a simple logic. Pronoun should refer back to a noun. There is a very straightforward calculation. Adjective should describe noun. Bus. Nothing else. There is no logic at all involved over here. And if you were little courses, you will have a hundred percent understanding to it. So, but it was useless. So the pronoun. So this is a wrong sentence. Why? Because a pronoun is trying to refer to a noun, which pronoun is trying to refer to a verb, which makes no sense at all. So what exactly we do over here? We remove this ambiguous pronoun with an eligible noun, and this eligible noun is called as an abstract noun construction. So the right sentence would be the parent tried to explain the risk involved in hitchhiking, but the explanation was useless. Or you can say the parent tried to explain the risk involved in hitchhiking, but the attempt was useless. Or you can say the parent tried to explain a uh, parent tried to explain the risk involved in hitchhiking, but the trial was useless. You can't say it was useless. so this is called abstract noun construction so you are not supposed to create your own sentences guys please understand for construction problem wait for the questions to come with question it will have a you will have a very clear picture do not try and create your own sentences right now now imagine question number 29 it says what real estate analyst have found that home prices have nearly doubled in last 10 years in southern california market which is consistent with the increase in population inflation there So technically, which should go back to what? Which should hundred percent go back to home prices, right? Don't you feel? Once read the sentence. It should hundred percent go back to home prices. Agreed. But yeah. Now, if you feel that which goes back to a home prices, what is your second job? To check that between home prices and which there is any verb or not. nearly doubled so there is a verb so which can never refer back to a home price is simple logic it just can't refer and that's the reason they are telling that there is a problem of implied pronoun here which tries to refer to double it is actually not trying to refer to double at all but they are writing this sentence with this thought process that you are 100% sure that it should not go back to home price why it should not go back to home prices because there is a verb in between simple logic 
a straight forward calculation over here you just i'm just telling you to remember just for which this rule only implies for which that if which refers back to a noun there should be no verb in between and that's the reason they are trying to say it is being referred to doubled it is not referring to doubled it is actually referring to home prices but there is a verb in between so it can't refer back to home prices and that's the reason it is said that it's much better you frame a sentence by by removing this entire ambiguous pronoun put it some proper noun over there so the right sentence would be a real estate analyst have found that home prices have nearly doubled in last 10 sales in southern california market you can say a research or you can say a trend or you can say an observation that is consistent with the increase in population inflation over there now it says that abstract noun modifies the entire clause what exactly it is the explanation will be very clear from here imagine when i say i have one onion which will make it impossible to cook the dish now you can 100% say all which is going back to onion but do you actually feel this is giving you a correct meaning this is giving you a meaning ki onion will make it impossible to cook the dish onion can't make it impossible or possible to cook the dish this is crap this is how we write the sentences but this is wrong here the reference of which is correct it is going back to onion but the meaning that is coming is disaster onion can't make it impossible or onion can't make it possible to cook the dish or you say i have one onion and that will make it impossible to cook the dish this is again that as a pronoun is going back to onion so the meaning that you are getting is that onion will make it impossible to cook the dish which is crap which is 100% crap so in such sentences what you do you replace this ambiguous pronoun with eligible noun so what would be the right statement i have one onion a deficiency that will make it impossible to cook the dish it's very clearly written abstract noun modifies the entire clause entire previous clause so i have one onion so a deficiency of onion can 100% make it impossible to cook the dish this is a right sentence and this is how it should be written please tell me if there is any problem over here the whole some understanding will come when we do questions don't worry about it that i'll ensure that it is done properly but is there any problem over here so imagine if you write if you read sentence number 4 the scientists discovered whalefish bones in arctic now usually we say what which proved the existence of whalefish which proved the existence of whalefish but do you think the sentence is right what is which trying to refer to which will refer to bones but do you think bones proved the existence of whalefish crap which can refer to whalefish do you think whalefish uh, proved the existence of whalefish no it can't go back to scientists scientists didn't prove the existence of whalefish it is a discovery that proved the existence of whalefish so you should write a sentence in a way ki the scientists discovered the whalefish bone in the in the arctic a discovery that proved the existence of whalefish or a findings that proved the existence of whalefish or a research that proved the existence of whalefish is this making sense imagine the coach tried to put five receiver on the line a strategy that failed now imagine we simply write which failed so what is which going back to would do you think a coach if which goes back to a coach it can't go back to a coach because there is a tried but even if it goes back to a coach do you think coach failed this is what you wanted to say over no you want to say, you actual meaning you want to say is that the trial has failed you don't want to say the line has failed or receiver has failed this is crap the coach tried to put five receiver on the line so your actual meaning that you want to say is ki the trial has failed or the strategy has failed but you will not say which failed that's crap for sure is this clear shreya manan yeah uh, rahul in the yeah. fourth sentence the scientists discovered whale fish bones in the arctic we can also write proving the existence of whale fish instead of finding that Maybe. will that be done no, no. no. okay that will be a cause and effect situation Okay. Findings that prove or results that prove. This is how you should be writing. But the point is that that's what I'm telling you. Okay. Right now, you don't create your own sentence with respect to constructions, please. Let's look into the constructions very properly. Once you are good with it, you can go ahead and create your own sentence. Now, come down to this guy, this part, guys. I've told you about which. So, what I've told you that which goes back to a noun, and between noun and which there should be no verb. And I've also told you what. that the reference of which is decided by decided by the clause that follows which follows which these are the two things that i have told you right now 
Can you please take two minutes and read this and I'll explain it to you? Just two minutes. So what the sentence is trying to say it says that the high court rulings in the case involving assisted suicide among college going teens from a single parent family which were overturned you 100 percent know that rulings can it is only rulings that can be overturned so now when you have found that which is going back to rulings your next job is to check is there any verb in between or not simple there is no verb in between it means the ruling reference is 100 percent right but you can't question me ki rahul which is a pronoun and we have noun suicides as a noun, we have teens as a noun, we have families as a noun, we have cases as a noun. So why is which going back to rulings? Why can't which go back to family and it is uh, ambiguous? So that's the place it comes into picture that the reference of which is decided by the clause that follows which, which were overturned by the Supreme Court. Family can't be overturned by Supreme Court, teens can't be overturned, cases can't be overturned, suicides can't be overturned, only it is rulings that can be overturned. So please ensure that this doubt should not come into picture at all, Ki Rahul, which is ambiguous because the society is also a noun, teens is also a noun, family is also a noun. So why should not which go back to these things? It should not go back to these things only because of the reason ki which the reference of which is decided by the clause that follows which. So here, which is here, which were overturned. What could be overturned? It is ruling that can be overturned. Nothing else at all. And between rulings and which there is no verb. So the reference of which is right. It's clear, Manan. Yeah. Gauri? Yes, completely clear. <clears throat> Just half an hour more. That's it. Please, please. Sorry, man. Because if we leave this again, we'll not be able to start question next week. And if we don't start question in two weeks, it will be a problem. So see here. Now, this is all about comparisons. All the questions deals with comparison over here. But you should understand positive forms of nouns as well. That's important. It says Jane's first novel was so well received that she thought of writing its sequel. What is he going back to? Always remember Rahul's Rahul's book is just book, nothing else at all. It has got no other role at all. Rahul's book is just book. It is just a reference point that this book belongs to Rahul. But technically, it should be assumed as book. That's it. So when I say Jane's first novel was so well received that she thought of writing its sequel, what is she referring back to? You can't simply say no, she is a beautiful girl. There is 4 billion C's in the world. What is she? You have to 100% denote a noun. I cannot say, if I have to say a sentence that Ritu is a beautiful girl and she is a hardworking girl. I can't say she is a beautiful girl and she is a hardworking girl. What the hell you mean by this? What is she referring to? So you have to have a noun. Ritu is a good girl and she is a beautiful girl. Now she is going back to Ritu. Because you have introduced a noun Ritu in the first clause. So you have to 100% introduce a noun. When you say John's first novel was so well received that she thought of writing it sequel, what is she referring back to? Think about it. It is referring back to Jane. But there is no Jane in the sentence because Jane's first novel is technically equal to first novel. That's it. So there is no Jane mentioned in the sentence at all. So you have to replace the C with Jane. 
you can't until you don't write some name you can't refer you can't put a pronoun for the reference now you have to write you can't say he is a good guy he is a hard working guy who is he you have to put some noun over there so jane's first novel was so well received that jane thought of writing its sequel not see thought of writing its sequel why not see because there is no reference to see what is he referring back to is this clear anyone any doubt please tell harendra ulash abhishek it got a little confusing for me can you repeat that please yeah yeah sure sure what's what's the what's the confusing part gauri just using she for jane because you said novel is the main subject here it's so just understand this ki jane's novel apostrophe this is possessive form jane's first novel is just equal to first novel so all i'm trying to say ki jane's first novel was so well received that she thought of writing its sequel when you write she all i'm asking you what is she referring back to who is she over here jane but there is no jane in the sentence at all but travel there is only one person is in this sentence so it there must no be jane only there's no person at all that's what we think of but it is not so rahul's book is just book kulash you can't consider it rahul's book so when is rahul's books I just imagine rahul uh, jane's first novel was so well received that she thought of writing its sequel so technically there is nothing called jane that is available in the sentence jane's first novel is just first novel that's it and that's the reason you should replace she with jane because it is jane thought of writing its sequel now look into the second statement it says jane's first novel was so well received that her bank balance sold now tell me are you talking about jane over here or you are talking about jane's bank balance tell me this in the second statement at this place jane's first novel was so well received that her bank balance sold are we talking about jane or we are talking about jane's bank balance think about it bank balance we are talking about jane's bank balance for sure so this her is absolutely fine because this is going back to jane's so you can't write jane's bank balance jane's first novel was so well received that jane's bank balance showed why you can't write you can't write ki rahul is a good guy and rahul is a smart guy this is redundant you have to use pronoun over here so jane's is already mentioned over here possessive form this is possessive form and the reference is absolutely perfectly fine the whole point is in first sentence we are talking about jane and jane as a noun is not mentioned in the first sentence so we have to replace this c with jane here we are talking about jane's bank balance and jane's is already mentioned over here so her is absolutely perfect pronoun which is going back to jane um just one question so in this jane's first novel are we not talking about the first novel yeah we are talking about the first novel okay so in that case it's fine to use her i'm slightly yeah, confused it is it is absolutely fine because jane's first novel and jane's bank balance So you can't write Jane's uh, first novel okay. and Jane's bank balance. So the sentence will become a redundant. Ha. Uh, okay. Understood. You should not be using that. You should not so try we, to use one noun multiple times. It can be said that Jane's first novel was so well received that inspired her to write its sweet sequel. Is that correct? That inspired her to write its sequel. No. That inspired Jane to write its sequel because you are now you are talking about Jane. That, right. Inspired her Jane to write its sequel, not her, because now you are talking about Jane Gauri. You are not talking about Jane's uh, sequel and all something like that, right? Okay, I think just solving questions will make it better. <laughs> yeah, it will be hundred percent be better. But just understand the whole point is that imagine if you write here Jane, is this making any sense? first novel jane's first novel was so well received that jane bank balance it is not jane bank balance jane's bank balance jane because bank. we are talking about yeah. bank balance over here yeah so got it got it jane's got it. is already written over here so this her is 100% fine agreed now come down to two some some complicated statement see jane's first novel was so well received that the publisher thought of giving her an additional royalty of 10% giving whom an additional royalty Now we replace this her with Jane's and write read this sentence. It is making any sense at all? 
Jane's first novel was so well received that publisher thought of giving Jane's an additional royalty. This is crap because we are talking about Jane over here, right? Anyone any doubt? Abhishek or Lars? Narendra? Arendra? No, no clear. No, Rahul clear. So this her is absolutely perfectly wrong. Not fine. I'm so sorry. It should be Jane because we are talking about Jane. Apurva, is this clear? Yes, Rahul, it's clear. So Jane's first novel was so well received that publisher thought of giving Jane an additional royalty of 10%, leading credence to the fact that her subsequent writing, now imagine, are we talking here about Jane or we are talking about Jane's subsequent writing? Think about it. You have to understand ki what is the main subject. Are we in this, her? are we talking about Jane or we are talking about Jane's subsequent writing? You are talking about subsequent writing. You are not talking yeah. about Jane at all. So this her is hundred percent fine because there is already Jane's used over here. I hope it's clear. I just yeah. hope. Yeah, yeah, clear, clear. Second says Jane's first novel was so well received that her skeptical husband. Now imagine, are we talking about Jane or we are talking about Jane's skeptical husband? Simple logic. Think in terms of what subject are we talking about? We are 100% are talking about Jane's skeptical husband. If you read here Jane's, it makes an absolutely perfect sense. Jane's first novel was so well received that Jane's skeptical husband. 100% fine. We can't say Jane is skeptical husband. That's crap. So yeah. this her is fine. Also started appreciating her writing style. Now imagine, are we talking about Jane or we are talking, talking about Jane's writing style? Simple logic. We don't have to complicate it at more. Or in place of her, just put Jane's and look, is this making sense or not? Jane's first novel was so well received that Jane's skeptical husband also started appreciating Jane's writing style. So here we are talking about a skeptical husband writing style. So this her is also absolutely perfectly fine. Shreya, is this making sense? Yes, Rahul. It's clear now. Come down to question number 31. Now it's pretty simple one. Don't worry at all. Now in 20 minutes, we'll finish till question number 40 and then again we can do it from next class. We can finish rest 10 questions in the next class and then we can finish. We can start questions in the next class. 20 minutes, please bear with me. That's it. Question number 31. While most Americans have heard of and used Microsoft products, few people know that its name is actually micro software, micro computer software. How many of you know this, by the way? So there is, there is so much of learning when you do CR and RC passes. Now you can't imagine. You will start. You, 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 if, you, if, you, if, you, if you prepare for GMAT verbal, matlab, interestingly, like if you love the preparation of GMAT Wobel, I promise you'll become a great reader. Great reader. Because when you go and read RC passes when you solve, and that's a place when you get to understand and all the RC passes, all the CR, these are all true events. Very less it will happen that they'll imagine something and make a and make some sort of a paragraph for you. Technically, these are all true events that they give you. And it will be so much of knowledge you can't imagine. It will be huge. But yes, the first thing is that sentence correction should be 100% good so that when you read something, you understand exactly what they are trying to say. If that is not happening, it's gone. So while most, while most American have heard of and used Microsoft product, few people know that its name is actually a sort of microcomputer name. What, what name? Microsoft name, right? Or do you feel that is there, he's, it's, it's talking about anything else at all? No, no, Microsoft product. But please understand, micro, not product, Microsoft. Microsoft product name can't be microcomputer software. It is only Microsoft whose name was microcomputer software, right? Correct, 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 yes. But please understand this, Microsoft is an adjective. <laughs> I'm so sorry. What? This is it is. This is what it is. I can't help it. This is what it is. Microsoft is an adjective for products. Simple logic. And a pronoun can never refer to an adjective. Or a verb. It only refers to a noun. So this sentence is 100% wrong. If you don't read it properly, you will do wrong. But if you read it now, when you frame your sentences, it will be very much absolutely taken care of. So what is the correct version? While most American have heard of and used Microsoft product, few people know that the company's name is actually microcomputer software. You can't say its name is microcomputer software. That's wrong. Agreed. Yeah. When you think that you figured it out, you throw a bomb. Anyone, any doubt? Microsoft is a noun. Anyone has this doubt? Because remove Microsoft and read the sentence. Well, most Americans have heard of and used products. Yeah, they might have used product. But if you remove product, 
and read the sentence while most american have heard of and used microsoft how can you use microsoft you can't use microsoft you can use microsoft's product simple right Perfect. so rahul sorry i just want to say uh, so basically if you remove microsoft will refer back it's will refer back to products hey, then again the sentence itself will be crap yeah okay you are the most sisha see 32 number while the company insists that insists that its salary for a man now this is a comparison problem very easy problem but you please read it very well so what is the sentence trying to test you on while the company insists that its salary for a man working in the executive branch of the organization so we are comparing salary for a man working in the executive branch of organization be the same as women what are you trying to do over here this is the one of the most disastrous statement that you can ever write you cannot say salary of a man come you can't compare salary of a man to a woman this sentence focus on a logical comparison on gmat apples can be compared to apples and not to oranges be very not in gmat in practical life also please it's not gmat it is written gmat here just because it's a gmat exam but logically you can't practical life also you can't write such a statements and all here salary for a man is being compared with a woman which is illogical the correct solution would be salary of a man should be compared to salary for a woman and that's the reason that you will write here that that as a pronoun will go back to salary you can't write a sentence while company insist that its salary for a man working in the executive branch of the organization be same as salary for a woman why we can't you write salary here because it will make sentence redundant you are writing salary twice that's crap you can't write rahul is a good guy and rahul is a smart guy that is 100% wrong statement so you have to use a pronoun which refers back to a salary salary for a woman should be compared to that for a woman to this that goes back to salary to so understand the structure of writing and you leave that imagine this sentence is giving you such a beautiful subjunctive construction at a lot of time it happens you read and you will not realize what this is subjunctive construction what is subjunctive construction this is not being tested over here subjunctive construction is futuristic verb plus that plus root form of the verb or be trust me how much i write even 5% of that you people right now everything will be clear i promise see while the company insists that its salary for a man be the same as that for a woman it is not trying to say salary for a man should be same as salary for a woman so so beautifully they have written a subjunctive construction here though it is not being tested what is insist futuristic verb plus that plus root form of the verb or be check so these constructions are not something that is valid only for jima this is valid for the entire writing structure you have to write sentence in this way you can't say while company insists that its salary for a man should be same as that for a woman that's crap should is wrong because insist is a futuristic verb plus that plus root form of the verb and be 1000% sure in jima when they ask you subjunctive and they ask you cons like should be and all they will never give you a sentence where there is a dot and dot parallelism also and there is a futuristic verb also it's a very standard exam very standard exam they will not play around with all these stuffs they have given you two dot and dot parallelism they have given you futuristic constructions also and they are asking you to judge now and think for yourself these things will not happen be very sure about it. same thing question number 33 The sixth Harry Potter book by British author J.K. Rowling sold a record 8.9 million copies in the first 24 hours. It was on sale more than any other author. What exactly you are trying to do over here? You are trying to compare number of copies sold with a number of copies sold by other author. The comparison in this statement is number of copies sold is being compared with an author, which is right, which is wrong. The sixth Harry Potter book by British author J.K. Rowling sold a record 8.9 million copies in the first 24 hours. It was on sale more than any other author. This is crap. Is hundred percent crap. It should be more than those by any other author. Number of copies by J.K. Rowling should be compared to number of copies sold by other authors. So those goes back to number of copies. So the right statement should be the sixth Harry Potter book by British author J.K. Rowling sold a record eight point nine million copies in the first twenty four hours. It was on sale more than those by any other author till date. Rahul, I have a question. If it was more than uh, any other authors. A U T H O R S apostrophe. Would that be wrong? Which one more than what? What did you say? Instead, of, uh, I understood more than those by any other author. 
but if it was more than any other authors but again you are comparing number of copies sold to authors only no you have to compare number no, of copies sold had... by jk rolling to number of copies sold by other authors so number of copy this this element has to come think about it now what you are trying to compare we are in this sentence but... we are trying to compare number of copies sold by jk rolling to the number of copies sold by any other author so until you don't say number of copies until you don't give a a uh, reference of a pronoun to number of copies you can't create a sentence like that special sure. okay I, i was writing it as auth a u t h o r s apostrophe ah, apostrophe right right no no that will be wrong yeah i you have the same confusion actually no no but again you are trying to authors means what oh. what is the positive is a number of copies what are you are, are you trying to say authors goes back to a number of copies something like that yeah because it's a possessive form of the noun so a u t h o r s apostrophe so it's authors something you can say that but the structure needs to be taken care of for sure the structure needs to be 100% taken care of more than that, that of any other authors more than that that will, more that than will, those by any other author. yeah that will more imply those the other authors yeah that can be fine hmm that can be 100% fine but this number of copies reference should go back to something now okay that's the priority ah, for sure because that is what we are trying to compare got it yes any other now there is a two operator of comparison like which says 10 minutes it will be done trust me like which says it says like is used to compare two nouns and like followed by verb is always wrong like followed by verb is wrong always so we keep saying this statement like i said right we say 100 times in a day but this is a wrong statement please understand like is used to compare two nouns like followed by verb is always wrong rest every places you can use as every place you can use as so but let's understand this with example it will be very clear it says like is used to compare two nouns used for hypothetical situations okay like followed by verb is always and always wrong so like i said is 100% wrong and you should never say also these statements as is used to compare what actions actions are nothing but verb verbs are nothing but clauses tense prepositional phrase it denotes a real situation but what exactly this means let's understand with the question it says as or like i mentioned earlier like i mentioned like followed by verb wrong so it should be as anyone any doubt please tell i'll clear the like and as part with the questions anyone any problem because like followed by verb is wrong that's the rule you should know this so it is as i mentioned earlier that is that should be moved up as or like other children in the neighborhood john sometime being missed in the classroom so john is being compared with what other children so you are comparing two nouns so like other children john sometime being missed in the classroom with his peers as or like a doctor see earns a respect now please a lot of thing comes into picture over here lot your comparison also comes into picture a comparison of apples and apples should be done oranges and oranges should be done you should not compare apples to oranges for sure that also comes into picture over here so imagine if you say like a doctor see earns a respect now see is nothing but some name let's say like a doctor gauri earns a respect imagine so when you say like a doctor gauri earns a respect the sentence the meaning is ki doctor is a separate entity and gauri is a separate entity this is the meaning so doctor is a separate entity gauri is a separate entity you may be the richest person of the world but you will not earn a respect that a doctor earns in the remotest part of the world why because the person the doctors are supposed to be the second god in the planet if someone you are going through some rough conditions and doctor is the one who saves you you will remember him for your life till the day you die you will not remember bill gates who has given 10 billion dollar for philanthropy work those things are all fine you have a money you can be a biggest philanthropist in the world but end of the day who saves your life doctor and they are the someone who should be respected most so again it is very wrong to say ki like a doctor gauri earns a respect why because gauri might be in whatever profession he might be the richest person of the world but you, what you are trying to do over technically what you are trying to do over here you are trying to compare the respect that a doctor earn gauri will earn the same respect being a philanthropist that's crap you should not say such a statements at all 
so it should be here like is wrong as the doctor gauri earns a respect it means gauri is a doctor as the notes a real situation this is a real situation as a doctor gauri earns a respect it means gauri is a doctor and she earns a respect this is absolutely fine but you can never say like a doctor gauri earns a respect moment you say like a doctor it means like is used to compare two nouns it means doctor is a separate entity gauri is a separate entity and you can't compare doctor's respect to gauri's whatever she does how does it matter if she is not doc- if she is not a doctor you can't earn a respect like a doc so it is always always better to say as a doctor she earns a respect it means she is a doctor simple logic now imagine nurse performed a surgery emergency surgery as or like a doctor think about it if you say nurse performed a surgery as a doctor it means nurse is a doctor which is crap please understand if you say nurse performed a surgery as a doctor it means nurse is a doctor which is 100% stupid meaning so you have to say like a doctor and the point is ki nurse is also a sort of a doctor only no they be with a doctor for like 10 years 15 years they know exactly how to perform so technically they are 100% a doctor without degree but i would still insist that don't go to a hospital where nurse perform a surgery it will be a problem go where doctor performs a surgery so it should be like a doctor <laughs> the wall acts as or like a buffer now imagine between your and your mom dad's room wall is a buffer for you the wall acts as a buffer or wall is actually a buffer my cooler cools as or like an air conditioner if you say my cooler cools as an air conditioner it means your cooler is an air conditioner when you say my cooler cools like an air conditioner it means cooler is a separate entity air conditioner is a separate entity so like is an absolutely perfectly fine statement i hope it's clear anyone not Not clear. Manan no. Abhishek, Ullash. Clear rule. The window cracks as or like a door. So it's not a window; it's a door. So window and door are two separate entities. So it should be like he jumps as a clown or like a clown. Imagine if I say he jumps as a clown. It means he's a clown. When I say he jumps like a clown, it means he is a separate entity. Clown is a separate entity, and both the sentences are right in whatever way you want to use it. Use it. So in this sentence, the situation is not clear. So contextually, both can be right. When you say he jumps like a clown, it means he is separate. Clown is separate. You are comparing a hypothetical situation. When you say he jumps as a clown, it means he is a clown. Agreed. Now a little bit about modifiers, guys. Ten minutes more, and I am done. Ten minutes more, and I am done. So that you go ahead and read it by yourself. So, using the latest technology, the mechanical problem was identified quickly. Tell me how many of you feel the sentence is right? And if it is not right, why it is not right? Please tell. You are most humbly, respectfully requested to speak, ma'am. Ah, uh, because the latest technology should refer to. I mean, using should refer to who is using the technology. Tell me, simple. Tell me, what is the meaning coming out? Why are you getting into this thing, Sakantha? What is the meaning here? The meaning here is that mechanical problem was using the latest technology, because when you write modifiers, what I have told you, whenever you write modifiers, after modifiers, comma, and the subject should come to what that modifier is modifying. So, according to this particular statement, they are trying to say that mechanical problem was using the latest technology, which is crap. Absolute crap. It should be using the latest technology. Comma Rahul identified the mechanical problem, or somebody. Rahul identified the mechanical problem. Now it will give give a meaning that Rahul was using the latest technology and he identified the mechanical problem. This is a perfect statement, but you can't write mechanical problem was identified. It means that latest mechanical mechanical problem was the one who was using the latest technology, and that will give you absurd meaning. Absolute absurd. How about using Rahul, the uh... Yeah. Uh, using the latest technology, the mechanical problem was identified quickly by Rahul. That's crap. No. After modifier comma and immediately the subject should come to what that modifier is modifying. In that case also, mechanical problem. The meaning will come as if mechanical problem is using the latest technology. Immediately subject should be after the comma to whatever that modifier is trying to modify. Yes, please tell me somebody was asking something. No, Rahul. I was. I was just thinking. Can we not use cause and effect uh, here? I mean, you can hundred percent use it, but the way you want to frame your sentences, you can frame it for sure. But just ensure that you frame it right. Here, just we are doing about the modifier, the uses of modifier that we are studying. 
the way you want to modify your sentences you can 100% write the sentences based on that but i'm just teaching ki what exactly is the modifier that's all agreed but what 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 type of a cause and effect situation you were trying to write over here tell me like uh, the cause is the latest technology and the, the solution is the effect okay. is that the problem got identified quickly because of this cause nahi 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 using the latest technology there is no verb at all cause will have a pr proper clause now when you when i read the sentence i know that this is 100% a modifier here agreed because there is no verb at all it's a phrase so it should refer back to some noun here the noun is mechanical problem so this sentence is giving you a meaning what cause and effect you are trying to do ensure that cause should be always a clause here using the latest technology is not a clause because there is no verb using ing form alone is never a verb agreed arend okay so now you see over here logged in the vault for 50 years the owner of the coin decided to sell them do you think what is this meaning giving you this meaning is giving you ki owner was logged in the vault for 50 years which is correct so the correct sentence should be logged in the vault for 50 years the coins were sold by owner something like whatever clause you want to create you create but it after comma logged in the vault for 50 years after comma coin should come if you say owner it means owner was logged in the vault for 50 years which is 100% wrong selling up the river the statue of liberty was seen this is crap it means it is giving you a meaning that statue of liberty was selling up the river a subject should come selling up the river i show the statue of liberty agreed anyone any doubt walking back from the village my wallet was lost crap because it gives you a meaning your wallet was walking back from the village that's not the case the case would be you were walking so walking back from the village i lost my wallet at the age of 20 my father let me drive his car when the father was at the age of 20 you will not be there in the world only how can you write such sentences at all in your life you should never ever write if you write such sentences gmat will deduct 100 points for one sentence remember if you mark such answers so my father let me drive his car when i was 20 the meaning should be very clear please understand beautifully and sensually dressed the men noticed her immediately so men can't be beautifully and sensually dressed beautifully and sensually dressed ritu was noticed by a man some some name should come some she should come she was noticed by the man on ritu whatsoever it is doesn't matter at all but in today's world even this is true you can't challenge right now everything is being challenged here. walking through the desolate lane of deserted city vandalism became apparent or it became apparent that city has been vandalized the point is ke when you say walking back from the desolate lane of deserted city who was walking should come after comma be very sure modifier whatever that modifier is trying to modify the subject should be just after comma that's the first thing that you should be writing so walking through the desolate lane of deserted city this is gone because no who was walking i don't know it became apparent this is also wrong somebody was walking so you can say walking through the desolate lane of deserted city i noticed vandalism all around not vandalism was noticed all around it gives you a meaning ki it was walking and vandalism was walking that's crap upon leaving the counter the cashier handed customer a receipt cashier so this is giving you a meaning ki cashier was leaving the counter or you can 100% say rahul why can't this be the case this can be the case but usually what happens customer leaves the counter by paying the cash right so customer should come upon leaving the counter the customer got a receipt from the cashier customer should come whatever clause you want to create you create that doesn't matter at all but ensure that whatever modifier you are trying to write after the comma that modifier reference should be very very clear unskilled in complex math bills score on the entrance exam was poor bills score is what score which is crap so unskilled in complex math bill scored poorly on the entrance exam overjoyed by the quarterly result the new bonus scheme was immediately announced by the manager so this is crap who was overjoyed by the quarterly result a new bonus scheme or the manager So manager was overjoyed. So you should manage right manager. The overjoyed by the quarterly result, the manager immediately announced the new bonus scheme. So it says more or modifiers. It says modifier error occurred due to faulty placing of the word or phrases in the sentence. There are no fixed rule to correct this. All we need to make sure is that a right meaning is conveyed using the least possible word. Your best friend in this situation will be your common sense. And of course, experience gained from the plenty of practices. For sure, like imagine when I say smoking a big cigar, 
the baby was admired by his father now you can write this sentence but trust me this is the most horrible sentence that you can ever frame in your life you are trying to say ki baby was smoking a big cigar which is crap smoking a big cigar the father admired his baby that's apps this is how it is romeo almost kissed juliet as soon as he met her you can't you don't almost kiss someone either you kiss someone or you don't kiss someone there's nothing called almost you kiss someone or you not kiss either you kiss someone or you don't kiss someone so romeo kissed juliet almost as soon as he met her to understand where you are placing the word that's very important imagine i have fallen in love with the beautiful women's daughter or don't you feel this is now you might feel this is right but this is not right why should you fall in love with a girl whose mom is very beautiful that's crap no? i have fallen in love with a women's beautiful daughter so beautiful should come beside daughter it should not come beside women and all this is not the way to write 100% right 100% ensure that write the adjectives just beside something to what it is referring to do not put it far from the word following are some useful tips for protecting your person and property from fbi why you want to protect your person and property from fbi that's crap following are some useful tips from the fbi to protect your person and property manufactured in italy abhishek was delighted with the fine quality of leather shoes that's again a stupid thing because you are trying to say ki abhishek was manufactured in italy it is manufactured in italy the leather shoes delighted abhishek or you can change the entire sentence in this way abhishek was delighted with the fine qualities of leather shoes manufactured in italy so it is not that you write sentence always like this all you have to ensure that whatever sentence you write the meaning should be very clear that's it place the words properly where it needs to be done so please ensure that you read this entire thing let's discuss from question number 42 to 15 in the next class i think it's too much for you i'm so sorry but i can't help so question number 42 to 50 we'll discuss in the next class okay and and this discussion will end in half an hour max please read it it will end in half an hour but understand now i'll be sending you the questions and i'm telling you how should you be doing the questions listen if you do if you don't follow what i'm asking you to do now then i will absolutely not be responsible whatever you do i you can't again come and abuse me for sure so this is one thing which should be 100% followed now we'll be doing questions from the next class to next three classes so see here and first we'll finish that so i'm sending you a email i'll send you in the night by up evening i have one class from 2 o'clock but that's okay let me just explain it to you it will be a problem so imagine i'll be sending you some uh, something like this like this is the homework that i'll be sending you for uh, sentence correction now these are the 35 questions that are there you have to solve now how should you be solving it i'm just telling you please ensure do not solve more than 7 8 questions a day don't solve it at all more than 7 8 questions just solve 7 8 questions every day solve same number there are three steps that you should be solving all this problem and if you don't solve in the way i ask you i am not responsible for it then again you think about for yourself what you need to do step number 1 every question you should follow this step step number 1 mark your answer and please understand there is no way of marking the answer except you choosing four answers are wrong have some invalid whatever reasoning you want to have have at least one reasoning for whatever so when i say mark your answer this is a place where you should take 10 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes whatever you take you take your own timing no rush at all absolutely don't rush it up and don't do the formalities that on friday you start solving question and then i will not be responsible you can't come and abuse me i'm telling you so mark your answers whatever time you take you take 10 minutes minimum 10 minutes to spend on the question there are some questions which can be done in 20 seconds if you get to understand the reasoning if you understand the reasoning i'm absolutely fine with it when i say 10 minutes you can spend 2 minutes also if you find that no rahul b is the right answer you have some reasoning to it it's okay have it doesn't matter at all but take your time to mark the answer step number 2 is i have also sent you the answers of all this question read the answer well now whether you have choose the right answer you have choose the wrong answer that doesn't matter at all it just doesn't matter and please don't get disheartened ki rahul we have got a lot of wrongs and all don't be disheartened at all it doesn't matter let, let it be wrong but what i am asking you to follow please follow and if you don't follow with this 100 question trust me for rest of the entire preparation your sentence correction will be gone case because reading theory understanding theory and doing the questions are two different thing completely step number 2 read the answers read properly there are some there are some answers which you may not understand doesn't matter at all and step number 
right in a very detailed way. Very detailed way, properly. That option number one is wrong because of what reason? So don't simply write modifier error and option number one is wrong. Don't write all these stuff. Write in a very detailed answer that E says learning how to synthesize the growth hormone. Please write who was learning how to synthesize the growth hormone. It was scientists that should learn how to synthesize the growth hormone. So option number E is wrong because it's a modifier problem. The first modifier, the subject is not proper for the modifier. So write in a very detailed way why each of the individual answers are wrong. Don't simply write subject verb agreement error. So option number A is wrong. If you do all these things, I'm not responsible. So whenever you are doing the questions, you come down to some construction. Let's say you come down to a constructions of abstract now. Imagine. There are some questions where you have also have a positive phrase, but we'll do the we'll do it in the next class and then we'll start the question. So whenever you come down to let's say subjective construction, your job is like let's say if you have marked the answer and the question was testing on subjective, but you have marked some wrong answer. You have read the answer. You understood that it's a subjective, but your job is to go in question number 22, make a proper note of it. What was subjective construction? What is abstract noun? What is absolute phrase? What is a positive? Only in this is the only way you will be able to remember. I promise you, if you do it this way properly, these 100 questions that we do in the class, I can promise you, you will have a great understanding of sentence correction. It will not matter for you that if your markings answer right or wrong, even if you do wrong, you will, and you will be actually entertained to understand why the right answer is right. And eventually, in 90% of the cases, you will understand the answer for sure. But if you don't follow this way, I'm not responsible. I'm being very clear. So I'll send you the mail by evening. I have one class at 2 o'clock. So I'll send you a mail after 5 o'clock. And uh, I'll send you, I'll write it in detailed way what exactly needs to be done. But this is what needs to be done. So your job was for verbal, for quant section till Wednesday do inequalities, ensure that divide time half and half, just if at all possible, give three hours. Some of you may be very busy, two hours. The one who can give two hours will have to divide one hour, one hour. But I would say in two hours, it will become a bit tough, you know what? It will actually become a bit tough. Just try to give three hours for sure. Minimum three hours you give. So one and a half hour, if you study maths, one and a half hour, you study verbal, there will be a sort of satisfaction. And I'm asking you to do six to seven questions of verbal. I'm not even asking you, you have to sit and do 30 questions. But if you do everything on Friday, it will be an absolute disaster for you. You will cry in the class, I'm telling you. So don't do that at all. You have to start from tomorrow itself. And if you can do it from today, you do it from today. But ensure before doing from today, we have still not done question number 42 to 50. But I've given you the videos. So 42 to 50 are discussed in those videos. So once do go ahead and read it once by yourself and look into the videos. And in the next class, before we start the question, I'll 100% finish 42, 50, 42 50. That I promise. Anything else anyone want to ask? Or should we close the class now? I hope it's very clear. So follow the maths homework till Wednesday, do the inequality. Thursday, Friday, do the absolute value. And in verbal, I'm just asking you to do six to seven questions per day. I'm not even asking you to do 10 questions, 20 questions, but do it properly. Don't at all worry that you have got the wrong answer. Just ensure, take it as much time. Do all sorts of bullshit calculation in your head, whatever you can, while you are marking answer, while you are while you are marking your own answer. Don't worry ki why I'm not thinking right and why I'm thinking wrong. Things will eventually happen that I promise you, but do whatever I've asked you to. I hope I'm clear. Let's close the session for today. I'll just have my lunch and start the clock. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank Thanks, Rahul. Bye-bye.